My mother is 84 years old, going to be 85 February 13th. Unfortunately, in declining health with myodysplastic syndrome, right. very, very severe blood disorder. Uh, I have to take her in for a transfusion Monday. She already had one three weeks ago. At this stage, the Procrit doesn't help. At her age, they won't do a bone marrow transplant, all that. She also has advanced seeing Alzheimer's. So my question is, um, would it be realistic for me to think that if I go home and start ju I, I try to give her green juice. She doesn't really like it too much. But if I try to give her wheatgrass and sprouts and try to incorporate, could I expect a, a reversal in the, uh, I think it's a hemoglobin, and an improvement in the blood profile and with the Alzheimer's, 85 years old? The last thing you said to me uh, is going to make me uh, give you an answer that you don't expect. Okay. There are four diseases that I don't like to work with because we prolong people's lives. And not that I think I am in charge of slowing down or changing people's lives, but the reality is, why prolong the life of a woman with advanced Alzheimer's? This is your mother. I love her. Yeah, yeah. I, my mother's gone every day 20 times I think of my mother. Mm -hmm. My mother is the most important person who's ever been in my, wife, my life. My wife's the second most important. And the reality is, you don't want to let go. But frankly, I have learned over the decades that it's not fair to keep a person alive who doesn't know who they are, where they are, and are frightened. So can we, on the first, help the bone marrow and the stem cells and all of that start to function the way they should? Yes, and you have a good shot of doing that. Mm -hmm. But I really propose to you as a loving daughter, why? Because the one thing I've never seen reversed is late-stage Alzheimer's disease. She's a kind of at the beginning, middle. So well, I, beginning is different. I keep giving her blueberries and fish oil. Which Let me sure. ask you a couple. Well, fish, you're killing her. You're creating uh, more Alzheimer's. Say that again? But and blueberries, you're giving sugar, and what we do know is AGEs, you yeah. saw that yesterday, uh, create the glutamate oh. that give the gray matter that you see oh. when we diagnose Alzheimer's disease. Mm. Okay, now, with that said, so away from the fruit, sugars, and certainly away from the highly contaminated lead, mercury, yeah. cadmium, radium, yeah. fish that are out there. Now I know. Number two, now you've changed your story. So she's not late stage. Does she know who you are? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, she's not late stage. But she has a forgetfulness and she's... Well, that's know. probably early to moderate stage. Yeah. Now, what we do know about coconut oil is quite different than the cheerleaders write about. They tell you that you can cook coconut oil. Yes, if you want cancer, you can. They tell you that coconut oil is always good for you. It's the best one. I've been doing decades of study on coconut oil. And what we do know is that 100% of the people that take it consistently have very high cholesterol readings. Not maybe, but they do. I've never met one who has, and out of hundreds and hundreds, as of now, it's uh, 897 people that I've tested with this. But what is in coconut oil is a mid-range triglyceride that is extraordinarily effective for memory. There is only one product that I can't condone because it's mostly chemical supplements that literally is in with the coconut oil. And because I needed to have something, I did an experiment on people about two years ago. And out of the 12 people, 10 of them saw a noticeable difference. Four of them saw remarkable differences just by taking this contaminated product because it had very high amounts of the mid-range triglycerides on them. It takes pounds to create one packet. Nobody could or should take pounds of coconut oil. And so that's something you may want to write to me about and do it. I beg the company. We just don't have the economics now to do it because we're fighting for your rights, et cetera, with other things. But someday I hope to just make a very pure, have somebody beg them to make a very pure mid-range triglyceride with no supplements in them or at least some whole food supplements. Mm -hmm. As of January 30th, we will have by far the most effective mine restructuring supplement that's ever been made. It's going to be called Conscious Mind. Life Give, Conscious Mind. Early stage, this is going to help your mother. Better than mid-range triglycerides. Uh, three years ago, Stanford University did a study on the brain, looked at nutrients that would work. They made a product, not Stanford, but somebody from. It was extraordinary. Out of 28 people we used it on, 25 of those people had market shifts in memory. 
I then took the product, looked at what was good in it, got two other products or nutrients that have come from separate studies, one in Britain and the other in Norway, added those to it, tripled the main ingredient in it, and that will be out the end of this month. That's for all of us that have memory slip. But most important for you, it's about memory use. It's not about supplements. Mm. Memory use. My book, Longevity, I talk about challenge your mother, talk to your mother, make her watch movies, talk about the past. If she has enough consciousness, let her do crossword puzzles. You should see Anna Maria's father. He's in his late 80s. The guy's brilliant. He writes, uh, reads six hours a day, doesn't wear glasses. When he was 50, 45, he started to need glasses. He broke the things, started to do Bates Eye Method. All of you that have glasses should try this because most of you can get rid of them. So, you know, 10 minutes a day of Dr. Bates Eye Method. And these are the things that keep the mind. Now, she's getting old. Her friends are dying. And you, know, you may be her lifeline. Mm -hmm. She's got to have more activity. Yeah. Okay, thank so, you. You're welcome. Yes, I have two questions. If someone tests high with a CR protein like an 8, what would you recommend for them to reduce inflammation? And the second one, um, what do you think about the sonic vibration machines? Are they worth the money? Well, we have different forms of sonic vibration machines. We have the original medical machine that was made uh, in, our, in our electromagnetic department. And it's amazing to help people lose weight. You know, my team the ones who are a little bit overweight, it's like shocking to me. Every time the area is closed, they're on that machine because it vibrates the system. It's just really great. If you have need to develop more strength in your legs, it's also extremely good for that. Not all muscles in the body, but the legs in particular. It's not going to do enough, but it's certainly a big part of it. Uh, your first question. Could you repeat it? Oh, if you test like a number eight for CR protein, which means you're full of inflammation? Okay. When you have an inflammatory problem, uh, we have years and years ago created an algae extract that's actually a whole food living COX-2 enzyme inhibitor. Now, thank goodness, modern medicine research does some remarkable things with research, and then they usually blow it with the product. And that was this case. They created something called Celebrex. And you may or may not remember, 15 years ago, they finally concluded that 10,000 Americans a year were dying from the use of Celebrex from heart attacks, but they somehow found a way to keep it on the market anyway, because obviously they were making a load of money from it. This is a natural whole food COX-2 enzyme inhibitor, and why they want to inhibit COX-2 enzymes, it's the cause of inflammation. This is raw, it's from blue-green algae, and it's called affinin. Life give, affinin. Number two, if we need more, a medical level herbal company called Orthomolecular, medical doctors, usually alternative ones, can prescribe this for you. Not even prescribe it, just get it for you. They sell it through doctors. This is called Inflamoblock, I-N-F-L-A-M-B-L-O-X. And then water, water, water. What's more important than the supplements? Water, 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 water because the number one anti-inflammatory is fluid, not turmeric. <laughs> second or the thing, turmeric is good, but it's not on the front line for me. It's maybe second on the list. Yeah, I was told in the supplement MSM was good, sulfur was good for inflammation. Well, again, everything I've just explained to you, the marker just indicates what's going on, IgA, IgFs, this type of thing. What you need to do is to change the lifestyle, obviously, to this, to speed up the process, take those supplements, drink tons of fluid. Exercise is a major part of it, probably equal, if not a little bit more important, or exercise, movement, that type of thing. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Brian. I have a question regarding arthritis, because I changed my lifestyle. I seem to be doing great in a lot of areas, but... I have a lot of it in my neck. You know, I just have arthritis to an extent where it's kind of frustrating because I spoke to Anna Maria briefly yesterday because she was in a rush out and she mentioned um, flax seeds in water. Oh, yes. But I, want, I just want you to elaborate that. And she also mentioned garlic, 
uh, cutting up garlic and apple and having that together. So I was hoping you could elaborate because she didn't get a chance to really get into it. Thanks. For both osteoarthritis as well as rheumatoid arthritis, what we have watched work, you take flaxseed, you put them in pure water, obviously, let them sit overnight or for eight hours, pour off the seeds in a strainer, and then drink that mucus water. It has an extraordinary way to help the cartilage, the fibrin of the cells, and that type of thing. When you talk about garlic, the center she directed and was internationally renowned, Brendel, their main medicine there was garlic raw. Because all of us know that one of the top ways to eliminate inflammation and microbes and the percentage of you that have arthritic conditions because of parasites is through garlic. <clears throat> now, unlike us telling you not to eat fruit in other areas, <clears throat> you can take organic apples, <clears throat> excuse me, cut them, and take a piece of that and chew it so the pectin from the apple coats the mouth. So you can then pop the fresh raw garlic into your mouth and chew them so it doesn't burn. You don't have the burn in there. And You're you, saying this you, comes from parasites? Is that oh yeah, there's a, 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 a fairly large percentage of people who have arthritic conditions, rheumatoid in specifically, that it's parasitic. In some cases amoebic, but many times parasitic. So that's basically the, the best. That's in well, also the lifestyle, 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 and then all of this other stuff. Raw potato juice also. Raw right? potato juice is amazing. So and what you do, do is every day, like oh yes, besides it tastes like juice. earth. You know, organic potatoes aren't I've tried bad. They just taste. It's not bad. So you take the entire cup, you let it sit for two minutes. You'll literally see about that much starch at the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. Now what you do is you can't even get that out of there. It's like chalk that you've blended up. Drink that liquid part of it. Oh, good, look at, I love this guy, he's kept me alive. Give him a big hand over here. Hi, Brian. Uh, I have a question about a little boy who's three years old. He drowned a year and a half ago, he was brain dead. They revived the little boy, and what's incredible, this father got a hyperbaric chamber and has put this boy in the hyperbaric chamber. The boy has come alive. He's, he's aware of what's happening. Can this child heal completely? I would like to say yes, I don't know. Parts of the brain uh, are completely capable of coming back. Some medical mysteries happened. There was a case up in northern Wisconsin, some of you may remember the doctors here, Will, about 10, 15 years ago where a boy fell into the uh, lake, froze over, and he was there for uh, some crazy amount of time, like 38 hours. Came out, parts of his brain temporarily died, and then they regenerated. This kid is fully functional at this point. So we've seen these impossible, miraculous, almost spiritual cases happen. So if he sees a response now, that gives me some uh, more courage to say that it's likely if he's making progress, he can make more. But sadly, the odds are against him. Once you've killed parts of the brain, most of the time it won't come back. But thank God for hyperbaric chambers because we utilize them at Hippocrates. And I think it should be mandated that in every region of the world, we have hyperbaric chambers for things like this, because if that boy went into a hyperbaric chamber shortly after that happened, we wouldn't be having this conversation. If one had a major stroke and we got them in there within 30 minutes to 45 minutes, they probably wouldn't have symptomology of stroke. Uh, I know I healed, I'll tell my story. You know, when I often buy these units, I always try everything. The only thing I haven't tried that we suggest are the female hormones. Anna Maria would take those or, you know, female supplements, she does all of that. But I went into a hyperbaric and I got it and I, 10 minutes later I wrote the check and said, bet, buy three of them. I never really use them. You know. And don't you know, I was at the gym, I took a 45 pound weight off and neglected to see the 35 pound weight in front and from here it crushed my toe. But I'm like brain dead 
So I did all of my workout and then went to take my shoe off, and there was a guy standing next to me that almost passed out. It was filled with blood. And I looked at my toe, it was crushed. Now, as much as I know about a lot of things in healthcare, I didn't know anything about crush injuries. So go to an orthopedic doctor, a friend of mine, lives this way, said, we have to take your toe off. So you mean you're going to take my big toe off? I've got to go to another guy to get the right answer. Said the same thing. <laughs> I said, wait a minute, I'm going to get into that hyperbaric chamber. So Anna Maria took garlic oil. You have an infection that won't go away, listen closely. Garlic oil. It, it makes antibiotics look like they're, they don't work. How do you make the garlic oil? You take it, you squash the garlic, you put it in oil, let it sit again six, eight hours. Then you, of course, don't put the chunks of garlic, gauze, and you wrapped it around. So it stayed, so it wasn't infected, or it would have come off. It would have rotted off, at, literally, at that point. I got in the hyperbaric chamber every day for three weeks. It was stunning to me. And I started to, I used to laugh at the Hollywood set that sleep in hyperbaric chambers. The eighth or ninth day I was in the hyperbaric chamber, I saw a tree. Uh, at the time, I was 55 years old or something. I saw a tree when I was driving. I wanted to literally park the car and climb the tree. What the oxygen did to me, I felt like an eight-year-old boy again, honestly. And for about a month and a half to two months after I stopped this, I should take the time to go back in there and buy one and sleep in it. The reality is that's what it does to you. My toe is completely fine. You can't even see it was crushed at this point. And if I didn't have the hyperbaric, it would have died. My toe would have been cut off, it would have died. This is remarkable stuff. And so I hope for the boy, but I'd be more than happy, gratis, to look at the paperwork of that boy, because obviously the parents love him, and they see progress, and there's certain things, parameters, that a doctor would be looking at. Probably mm -hmm. an endocrine or a neuron specialist. If you could send me the paperwork, not only I, but I'll go to a colleague of mine who knows more than I'll ever know about this and see what his opinion is on potential success. For this this little boy, he's an Amish boy, and the father bought two hyperbaric chambers, and then he built one, which is 10 feet long. It's like a submarine. No kidding. I go and use it every once in a while. It's amazing. Even putting the little boy in the hyperbaric chamber, and I'll move his legs, and I told him, I says, have his therapist work his body in the hyperbaric chamber. Exactly. Would you recommend E3 Live or any... any, <coughs> any? Yeah, all of that can help. The neuron stimulators, not in the chamber. Not in the chamber? Not in the chamber, but the neuron stimulators, uh, the grasses, anything that brings exceptional amounts of peroxide oxygens, O1s in. So anything green, fresh, the algae is better than the algae is the wheatgrass. Green the wheatgrass is better than better, the algae? Because the algae in the freezing process uh, diminishes dr dramatically the amount of oxygen that's in it. It's there, okay. but not like you have in fresh wheatgrass juice. Okay, I'll get him to use the wheatgrass. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. very much. Surely. <clears throat> and we love the Amish. She brings me up to speak to the Amish sometime. It's so funny. I'm in a room, and here are people all in the Amish garb, and I have to lecture without laughing. And then they're so genuine, they're so beautiful, they're so innocent. They're like being with young children. They're 60, 70-year-old people sometimes, and they're like kids because they're just really freed. Hi, my first question is, what do you recommend for sleep apnea? I didn't hear that. What do you recommend for sleep apnea? Sleep apnea, okay. Number one, medicine has done a lot of good in this recently, where the units that they're using to retrain the respiratory system, I think, are very effective. If it's you, it's obviously not obesity. No, no, me. No, it's not me, but it's a friend of mine who, he's not obese, but he's very tall and yeah. Jamaican. He's a little, he's very strong, like Hercules kind of built. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, there could, be a, there could be a problem with that, and God knows if he's taking ungodly things like whey protein or God knows what. That could in and of itself create an apathy problem. My brother-in-law, Anna Maria's brother, is an athlete. He's 55. You girls should know he looks like he's 40. Guy runs it, you know, I'm not a fan of running because it destroys your skeletal structure, but he runs all of the time. You know, a nice kid, sleep apnea. He hardly sleeps because he has it. And we tried him on the machine, we tried him all at once. We realized that this kid had cartilage that was out of position. So in his case, surgery is the only thing that corrected it. And bingo, the next night, no longer had it. So this is where we need to bring the docs that know what they're doing into this picture. I see. My second question is scars. 
What do you, because I know scars interfere with energy flow and chi. And internal, internal scars or external scars? Both. Okay. When you have a scar, yes, it has something about diminishing energy, but I'd be more concerned uh, when you have a scar, internally especially, uh, organ and ventricle function. Now, scars naturally start to erode as time goes on. There are p particular things that hydrate cells that are extraordinary in helping to reduce scars. Raw aloe, number one. Hands down, that's 50% higher than anything else on it. You can consume raw aloe, and the best way to do it is go down to the produce distributor, not the wildly expensive health store. And you say, I want to come here every two weeks and buy two boxes of long tropical aloe leaves. Take that home to your same wheatgrass juicer, and at the bottom you just need that much, then you go up you need that much, and then you go up you need this much. For th three days you use that, and you drink that fresh raw juice that comes out of the aloe. Number two, you would be taking the same thing I give for diverticulosis, diverticulitis, uh, Crohn's disease, colitis. You would actually be giving fenugreek sprout juice. And if you have a really bad track record growing things, start with fenugreek. This stuff doesn't die. You could drive a truck over it and it's going to give you the finger. I mean, this is amazing stuff. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. So in a jar, you put some seeds, put water, and even if you forget, they're going to grow. And just grow fenugreek and start to juice out as part of it. Next, there are some hydrating creams. Hippocrates has one, the Life Give product, that's amazing for healing tissue, and it goes right through the external membrane, but all your external scars, this is going to speed it up 30 times, maybe 50 times. I've never seen anything like it. This helps to take scars away. So when you call the Hippocrates shop, ask for the Life Give cream. And a colleague of mine, this is a great story, you'll understand, he's a, a chemist, a biochemist, and a chiropractic doctor. He's a guy at about 75, New Yorker, and uh, Dr. Tom was the Yankees chiropractor in the 50s. I said, they knew what a chiropractor was? They said, the only ones that back, back then were the uh, athletes. They knew, nobody else knew what it was. Nobody had a job unless you went with an athletic team. And he used to crack the back of Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle, and the, that was part of what he did. This guy's brilliant as a chemist, and he's got a big heart. You know, he's a devout Catholic and practices Catholicism the way it was supposed to be. Practice. You know, he's got a big heart. He really does. He's a humane guy. He's not worrying about money anymore. He just does what he wants to do. He created this product that's amazing. When you see him, he's in his mid 70s. His skin looks like a 20 year old kid. I keep threatening to use it, then I forget to use it. It's amazing stuff. So it's not only good for scars, it's cosmetically amazing. Women buy this stuff by the case once they figure it out, <laughs> figure out what it is and they slap it on. What is so, it again? What is it called? Okay, it's Life Give Cream. Okay, got it. The reason I ask is because I have a C-section scar, even though it's two, year, two and a half year old you know, scars. Are one of the things you have to know about women that are going to become pregnant here, especially all of you in the front row here. <laughs> you didn't know that. You're going to have another baby, did you? <laughs> when you're getting pregnant, when you're getting large, I should say, uh, there are certain gels and oils that you can put on so you don't have the stretch marks after that. And there used to be this wonderful magazine, I told, I'm told it's gone out of business, called Mothering Magazine. It was one of the best uh, periodicals I ever read on any one specific subject. When we were having kids, I read it. Really great information, pertinent. But if you can get online and look, maybe it's online now, Mothering Magazine, in the back they always have listings of all of these gels and oils. And they're just, when we get people to do this, it just surprises me. You see their belly like a week after they had the baby? There's no stretch marks. And it's also very good. I've used that type of thing for scars, but not as effective as the other things I say. I My final question, what do you recommend for natural uh, birth control? It's called the rhythm method and rubbers. Yeah, it, well, rubbers aren't natural. <laughs> but Let me explain something to you. You women listen astutely to this one. Again, you're letting us be peacocks. Now, let me tell you, I don't like prophylactics. I don't like the way they feel. It's not fun, and it sort of like puts a damper on everything. You get all hot and bothered, and all at once you say, oh, let's get the package and open it up. You know, it's sort of like, <laughs> forget it. But on the other hand, at the end of the day, 
We're not the ones that have eight times more AIDS from sex. The women are. We're not the ones that get pregnant. The women are. We're not the ones that contract venereal diseases at a three times greater rate than a man. Do you follow? Women have got to be in control of this. You know, now, you heard my story yesterday. The thing that I finally realized there was a major inequality between boys and girls is in my house I didn't see that. My father was a Renaissance man who was conscious. He loved my mother. He told us he loved her. <clears throat> he kissed her. He hugged her. Every day I saw that. He respected her. He never talked down to her. He realized, as I realized, I'm not a nester. My wife is a nester. <clears throat> I'm a big kahuna walking around the world and up here on the stage. When I get home, who's the big kahuna? My wife, and it should be that way. I don't want to be the big kahuna. I want to be her child at that point. Hug me, kiss me, love me, feed me, I'm fine, I'll leave now, I'll be the big kahuna. <laughs> so, <laughs> bottom, line, bottom line is that women have got to take charge of this sexual business. And if you don't, you're in trouble. There is nothing safer with a higher percentage of not getting pregnant than a provolactic. That is number one, hands down, what you should do. It also protects you from a wide array of things, some we haven't even identified yet. There's new diseases, venereal diseases, that when I've talked to the guys who lead the disease control center, they can't even identify what they are, but they see them commonly coming. And they've been working in one case, they tell me, for seven years, haven't figured it out yet. So be cautious with this stuff. It's not as sexy, but it's a lot better. The rhythm method. Oh, yeah, I was curious if you know anything herbal. I know that, like, the indigenous tribes, they use leaves and herbs for oh, yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Well, pennyroyal is the one that's most available for you, but it gives some women cramps, about half the women cramps. It will make sure you don't get pregnant better than any other herb I ever knew. I used to train herbalists. And so better than any other herb I ever worked with, pennyroyal's the one. Okay, As a matter of fact, even after the act, if you take enough pennyroyal, can help. Thank you so much. You're welcome. What, are you making them walk now? What's this, the plank or something? <laughs> Here you go. God bless you. <laughs> Hi. Um, six months ago, I was, um, went to the doctor with a, a series of ailments, a my gynecologist, and he thought it was a, just a cyst on my ovary, um, sent me for a sonogram, couldn't find anything. I went back. He said, it's nothing, and it wasn't nothing. I, I, I had night sweats and fevers and... I felt really ill, and I'm a healthy person. I'm a Pilates instructor. So I, I went back again, and, and I said, I know there's something wrong. Could you please help me? He sent me for an MRI. And in the MRI, they found um, a very enlarged, a few enlarged lymph nodes in my groin area. So he said, we have to do surgery right away, take everything out, full hysterectomy, and remove your lymph nodes from your right side. And I said, that sounds sort of drastic. I mean, what do you think I have? <laughs> And he said, well, even you, you knew that, right? Yes. <laughs> it's like, well, Maron, what happened? And he said, well, I, I think uh, you don't need your, your female parts anymore because you're done having children. Oh, yeah. We could put you They're on. They're just there for children. And our pleasure, by the way. Right. <laughs> well, I have three children. The smallest is three. And so he, he said, we'll take your lymph nodes. And I said, but don't I need those? And I, I'm not a medical person, so I don't know much about it. And he said, no, you have plenty of them. So I thought, <laughs> That's what, that was his answer? That was his answer. You, know, you can get rid of them. You have other ones. Don't worry about it. They'll make up for we it. We have more. <laughs> so when I did some research, I, you know, I saw there was some risks in that, and I went for a second opinion. And I said, do you think, I asked my doctor, do you think I have cancer? And he says, well, I'll have an oncologist in the surgery room with me. I said, but you're not an oncologist. So I prefer, so I went to Sloan Kettering. I sent them all of my records, and upon reviewing the case, they took the case. And I was grateful. And when I went, the doctor that I spoke to did minimally invasive surgery, which I thought, that sounds great. He puts a blue dye, and he'll only take out the lymph nodes that are affected. Wonderful. When I went to him, he examined me. I then had a, uh, he told me he's also going to do the surgery. So I decided to go holistic. I came upon your website, actually. Um, and well, let me I ask a question so I'm up to speed. Mm -hmm. When they exhumed... The lymph node. They didn't exhume it at this point. Okay. The doctor. So they did a biopsy, though? Not yet. Okay. So far, no surgery. I said to the okay. doctor, but my lymph node was like, you know, six, seven centimeters, and there was plenty of them affected. Right. I had a PET scan done, is what it was, and it, it <coughs> lit up. He believed I have lymphoma. And I Under got, your arms, do you have sensitivity between your legs? Yes. 
So you do under your arms and as yes. well as between your legs? Correct. Okay. Very fatigued, um, you know, weak, constant sweats, you know, the whole nine yards. And so I got very nervous, scared. I have reached small, yeah, I, I said that. So when I went on the website, I saw people giving testimonials about wheatgrass and everything. And I live up in near Goshen, a little hamlet called Sugarloaf. So I went to Perfect Foods, and I met with the woman there that manages the place. And she said she beat cancer, and she had four stage, and she was wonderful, and she hugged me, and she gave me two big trays of wheatgrass and a bunch of sunflower sprouts. And she said, I, just keep juicing and doing this and go organic and drink water. And she told me what to do. And I followed her instructions, and I was so excited, and I told everybody about it, you know. And I went back, and when I went back to the doctor, he gave me another PET scan um, to see, because he said he'd give me the 60 days to go this way. When I went for the PET scan, I got nervous. I didn't mention the first PET scan I went to. This was my question. When I went for the PET scan, I got nervous about all the radiation you're going to be receiving, because they give you a little card. And it's scary, and it says, you know, you can't be around people for 48 hours, and the cops <laughs> might stop you. And I thought, oh, my God, this is a lot of radiation. And, and so I, I started to cry, and the manager of Sloan Kettering PET scan you know, imaging put me in a little room in a corner, and he said, do you want to be like Steve Jobs? Oh, geez. And I said, oh, God, no, you know, because he had just passed away. And, and, and he said, do you know that he came, he had a, a colon cancer that could have been cured if he, if, if he came to us sooner, but he wanted to go the holistic route, and look what happened to him. Well, he, he had said, pancreatic cancer, love. Oh, pancreatic. I'm sorry, cancer. I forget the p cancer. I'm nervous. So he said, Which you they should don't be thankful succeed. for this pet Medicine scan. does never succeed with, by the way. I'm sorry? They do not succeed with pancreatic cancer. Okay. And it was Steve Jobs, cancer. by the way, lived eight times longer than the average person does with pancreatic cancer. So first the doctor was fibbing to you at that point. I, it was, it, he scared me nonetheless. And he said, this is your best way of handling it. So I went for the PET scan. And um, what happened after that was from the MRI to the PET scan, I did everything right, juiced, you know, all the right diets. The doctor said, I can't believe it. Your lymph nodes, only there's only one now that's lit up, and it's very small. And, yeah. And Now, this was the same doctor that originally saw? This is the second doctor. This is the, the doctor at Sloan Kettering that said, I, okay. they believe Let you have lymphoma. Let me rephrase it. Had the doctor seen the first scan? Yes. He has a, he's a good doctor. He told you the truth. He did. That's he great. was a great doctor at Sloan. In fact, they have an integrative medicine department um, that they offer acupuncture and counseling, which really helped me. I mean, I, I was happy with my experience um, with Sloan Kettering. I, I had a good experience. Now, that's unique, but I'm glad it, it, it happened was, well It was wonderful, you. but, but what, hap what, what turned a little bit was it became October, and the farmer's markets around me closed, and I had no way of getting fresh so organic don't tell me you started to juice hot dogs. No, I, I, sort of, I sort of thought I was getting better, and I, and I slipped this and went back happens. to my I know. regular I know. eating in bad ways. And he said, come back in 60 days for another PET scan, and I did, and unfortunately, it, it came back. Right. So he said, we absolutely have to take it out and biopsy at this point. I can't wait. And he did. And when he biopsied, it was no cancer. God bless. What did he call it? Do you remember? Well, that's my question, too. He, he said it could be Castleman disease. Okay. And I, I, here's, I, what, here's what I would okay. like you to do, and I'll help he, you on just this. Just so you know, my diagnosis is unspecific. I don't know what that means, and I've just been released from the hospital four days ago. Well, look, what I want you to do is to get, and this is an advice to all of you. Mm -hmm. Whenever you do anything with the doctor, please request the paperwork. One of the major mistakes that all of us make in medicine, and I have to caution myself from not doing this at times, is that we never look at your history. Mm -hmm. And the poor doctor is constrained, and they're in the office, and she and he, we have to see God knows how many people a day. That's why years ago uh, I said, I don't see any more than 15 people's, people a day. And they said, why? You could see 30. I said, no, I can't. It's the 16th won't know I'm bullshitting, but I will be. You get goofy after a while. You can't see that many people. Now, with that said, if you bring in records and say to the doctor, I really am requesting you to see this and sit there, and force us to look at these. This is what I do, and our team does at Hippocrates. We look at what this one said and that one said, because doctors know what they're talking about most of the time, and if we have a consensus and we see 
everyone agrees and this looks like it, then we most often, not always, most often come out with the right answer. So what I would like you to do is get paperwork, send it to my name at Hippocrates Health Institute. It will get to my desk. I am around a lot more in the next two months and I will be after that. And so you will get an answer from me within the next 30 to 45 days. And I'll have, I have a diagnostician that's much better than I am. I'm good. He's great at this. That's all he did for 25 years, Dr. Lamberg. And so we'll look at this together. Anna Marie will come into the picture, and we'll come up with what we think. But everything has been good news. Now, mm -hmm. I hope, have you been here the whole weekend? Yes. Okay. I hope that what you learned here, it's not only food. No, I'm right. And you can't be motivated by fear, mm -hmm. because fear kills, love heals. You've got to love yourself enough. And don't look at your children and get desperate and say, I want to be alive because I'm a mother and I don't want to leave. That gives you more fear. You've got to fill up your life. And you can understand the next phase that God has given you now, and I believe this is what's going to happen, is you're going to be a person who conquered a catastrophic concern. And that may be what your obligation is to yourself and to others at that point. So let us get into that picture and help you. And if we have something intelligible to say, we will, and we'll let you know what our thoughts are and what we think, other than just wheatgrass, can be employed in this. Thank you. So congratulations, Ophir. Um, can you give us your thoughts on Lyme? On Lyme's disease? Yes. Oh, boy, this is a scary thing, you know. I used to think uh, Lyme's only happened in Long Island and Connecticut. Now when I visit Europe, it's all over Europe. I'm going to be doing a lecture in Marin County, California, about a decade ago, and they said, this is the second hottest Lyme area in America. I said, you're kidding me. I didn't know that. Canada, northern Canada, Lyme's disease. Now, what we do know, and nobody seems to talk about, is that it's not only carried by ticks. It's carried by fleas, other bugs. You can get it a lot of ways. Uh, what we also know is that it really resides beautifully in damp, moist, dark places. So, for a good part of the year, you have that here. Unless you have a super hot summer, you're going to have a higher outbreak than normal. We know it's not only a deer it's carried on. It carried on rabbits and rats. and Rats, can you imagine that, in cities? Now, what we also know is that people can reverse it 100%. Because that's what we've seen Time and time again, every time somebody does what they're supposed to do, lo and behold, they no longer have limes or the symptoms of limes. But it's not just diet and lifestyle. It's not enough. Lyme's disease is an example of the intelligence of other life forms. Just like bacteria. Do you know viruses, why a lot of people die of viruses? That they actually go into the human cell. And that if you're weak enough, they can kill you. There's an ever-growing consensus now in the oncological community that maybe a lot more than cervical cancers are coming from viruses. And I'm starting to understand that maybe, if not directly, indirectly, long-term viral infections can lead to higher amounts of cancer rates. And there's enough empirical evidence in science and work I've done with thousands that I'm starting to get that. And so the same thing with spiral cape, that they go in like a screw, one of the rare times there was thought given on what they call it. It looks like a screw. It screws itself into the cell knowing that your immune system will not kill healthy cells. How do you like that? It's like the virus. And because of that, it's incredibly difficult to get rid of. Now, the best advice, if you have a bite, see the ring, go immediately to a medical doctor and get the do high doses of, of antibiotics. Because within 24 hours, you will stop the Lyme's disease. You go 36 hours, less chance, 72 hours, forget doing it. The only protocol they have, because Lyme's disease wasn't taught most doctors in medical school, we didn't know what it was recently. We don't even have a great tool to diagnose it. You know how many times people have been told they don't have it, they have it, they don't have, they have it, they don't have it? I mean, it's just, there's only one test I know of in Austria that costs so much money, and they won't let it come in and out of the, the country, sending blood, obviously, after the AIDS epidemic. So we're impotent in other parts of the world than Austria, I guess. Hopefully that spreads. When you do, this is the fifth time I've been giving this advice. When you do the Argentin IV, 
and live this way, you have the potential, as hundreds have, to reverse Lyme's disease. Keep taking antibiotics, inevitably it's going to weaken you, weaken you, weaken you, and you won't be talking to me about Lyme's disease. You're going to be talking to me about cancer, about some other infectious problem, because the more antibiotics you have, the weaker your immune system becomes, the weaker your immune system becomes, you invite more and more disorders to the body. Um, have you heard of someone named Dr. Zhang who treats Lyme via uh, garlic? I know of him, but I can't articulate. I don't know what he's doing. I've heard people say they help. He was helping them. I don't know. I don't know enough about him. I've been but I just was curious because I, I know that when it's chronic, it's much more difficult to treat. Mm -hmm. Can I ask that just one last question? Um, is there um, an emotional component to treating um, thyroid disease? Oh, yeah. I mean, if you look at thyroid, it in great part attacks women. And there's a reason for that. Women are much more hormonal than men. I don't mean that on an emotional basis. I mean a literal basis. Remember, women have, through evolution, in the process of growth, had to have the ability to see many things at one time because until very recently we had 10, 12, 15 children. Now, all I know is when we had three children at home at the same time, it was crazy world. I can't imagine my great grandparents and, and grandparents, where they were running around the house with 15 kids, 16 kids. I just can't imagine. But notice the peacocks leave, honey, I'm going to work. Peacocks come back and say, honey, I'm home and then plop in the chair and read or watch television or do whatever they're going to do. And 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you gals especially are like this. Now, you're still wired like that, having all this offspring. And because of that, your hypersensitivity on the endocrine system, and this is part of the endocrine system, is much more elevated than it would be with a man. Now, with that said, how the thyroid goes bad, the pituitary and pineal gland in the center of the brain are the epicenter of thought and everything in consciousness. Where consciousness begins is pituitary pineal gland. It's the voice of God again. It comes down out of that area, goes to the dispenser here, the woman on the phone from the taxi service. And God says, send the taxi to the heart, send the taxi to the toe, send the taxi to the ba 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 do ba do ba da. And all at once, because this woman hasn't been fed her vital nutrients, selenium and iodine, because that's not been in our soil for more than a century, and because now the woman is having a cell phone stuck to her head, getting radiation, laptop computer in front of her, working eight hours a day on the laptop, et cetera, et cetera, wireless outside of her house, living in New York City, all at once this gets frazzled. So why we see a shocking spike in thyroid problems in the last generation is because the acerbation of electromagnetic frequencies. With that said, 50% of the women, and we're going to do a little poll here, how many of you here have a thyroid concern you know of? Raise your hand. There you go. So it's half the women, every group, everywhere I go in the world now, it's 50% of you. You know what that would have been 40 years ago? One old lady in the back, 88. Now it's 50% of the women, and it starts at teens. We have 20-year-olds coming to us with hyper or hypo or Hachimoto, and et cetera. If you get on the Hippocrates website, you will see story after story after story where people had flaming problems with their thyroid, took responsibility for their life, and healed it. There are certain supplements we use besides the iodine that Anna Marie articulated and described to you to test. And we have one that Dr. Marshall and I put together called Life Give Pinnacle, that it doesn't help to reverse the problem, it stops the breakdown of the thyroid. I mean, even healthy women that don't have a thyroid problem, not a bad idea to take that every other day. If you have a thyroid problem, every day. Okay. Then there's things that we also need to do. Reduce this, reduce that. If you're going to do, a lot, I don't wear jewelry, I'm not a big fan of jewelry myself, but I wear this. This is called a BioShield. Now, this isn't 100% foolproof, but it helps dramatically. So my electromagnetic body doesn't attract these frequencies and zap itself and 
mess itself up on the electric and etheric level. You follow that? So when the electric comes, it doesn't make it evaporate and disappear mystically. This is a stronger electromagnetic magnet than my body is. So just like a lightning rod on top of a barn, the lightning hits this rather than hits this. Do you follow? So these are things that are important. But try to avoid them. You can stop using cell phones. How I use a cell phone, they hate me. My young boy, you know, he's very conscious now. He's a teenager. I always put the cell phone here on a table, and I'm in an airport yelling, what the heck do you say? And he says, shut up, shut up. I said, I don't care. I'll never see these people again. <laughs> but don't touch the damn cell phone. Put it in front of you. When I'm at a hotel, I lay it on a pillow, put the pillow sideways, and I talk. It's over on the other side of the bed, and I talk. Put it on speakerphone. That's it. That's how you do it. All right. Thank you. The earphones make it worse. If you have a Bluetooth, the Italian showed us it gives you the same level of cancer but makes it more problematic to exhume. It goes deeper into the head. They do make GIA. Again, when you have a cell phone, you need a GIA on it. Like if you look, do I have my cell phone with me? On the cell phone, if you take this off, in the back of this I have a GIA card. This whole thing has an electromagnetic card. That's the number one way. You get one of these, you put a GIA card back here. You put a GIA little dot on there. On your laptop computer, you put a larger GIA, G-I-A, on these. And then, of course, keep it off. By the way, that's not really off. But it's dramatically off compared to what it would be if I had it turned on. And then, you shouldn't do what I'm doing, by the way, now. Because I'm on the way out to New York City tonight, I put all of this stuff here. But the fact of the matter is, GIA makes an earpiece. Now, the perfect world is, and you, don't, you and I don't carry a purse, but if we did, we'd be in better shape. Maybe not sexually, but <laughs> ways. So if you turn this on, have the card in the back, or the GIA that you stick onto it. Have a purse, so it's not on our body, you know. And then put the GIA earpiece there. That's the perfect way if you're going to use a cell phone, and with the earpiece. Don't get the Bluetooth. It gives you the same level of cancer. Okay. A few more questions. Hi, Brian. I do have a few grandchildren questions, but because you've been such an excellent teacher for me, I have learned to love myself enough where now I can ask a personal question. Great. Um, <laughs> so I exercise aerobically a fair amount. I'm on a tennis team, all this stuff. And recently I have gone to the gym. Good. And I told them that I want to lose weight and be toned, like they sort of gave me questions. And they gave me what takes me 25 minutes a circuit with the like Nautilus kind of weight thing. And you, you count short periods between, so you're doing aerobic as well as weightlifting. Is that right? I'm not sure what you mean. In between so, the repetitions. I mean, you go from one machine, then you count to 30 and go to the next machine? Yeah, well, in between, like, however many reps they say to do 10 or 12, they say count to 30 and then do another round. So right now I'm on two rounds and then go to the next one. Oh, point. that's a smart way to do it. So she's 25 minutes and 25 minutes. Well, the, no, the whole thing takes me 25 minutes, and you're okay. saying yeah, it's not enough. an hour and a half. Yeah. So, But let me put it this way. If you've never lifted weight, rather than me intervene here, it's probably initially enough because what it creates is elasticity and starts to bring blood flow to the muscle and gives it some tone. Now, what you're really asking is to get your body hard and to look like that and get rid of the little fats that we have if we don't do this, is that you need to have more exerted weight that you increase to a rational level. Now, I stopped increasing weight almost always when I was 50. You know, I stopped at heavy weight and I maintain heavy weight. But you don't start with heavy weight. You start with lightweight and form, lightweight and form. So they're probably doing it in that way. Your next question to them is, hey, listen, I want this area. Here's where I have a little flap. This is, please tell me what I can do to get that. And the, the right answer, so you know you're in the right hands, is you have to lift heavier weight or put you know, leg presses or something like that. And that really takes care. You'll be shocked in, in two months. It won't be there anymore. Okay. But unless you lift consistently have her wait and spend at least an hour and a half in there, you're not going to get the results that you're after. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
But my she got into the gym. That took me 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> my granddaughter's four. She has, uh, apparently has a cyst at the top of her back, mm. at the bottom of her neck, a year ago. So the doctor said it was probably from a bug bite. And I'm wondering. And they didn't I, decide to lance it? N they haven't done anything yet. They're going back to the doctor in two weeks, and I wanted to see what. Well, there, there may be a complication I'm not aware of. It could be close to the spine or something, so the doctor's reluctant. But usually, if it protrudes, you can lance it, and it's not a problem. A good doctor would know about that. Okay. Uh, probably, I would ask that if they don't bring it up, because okay. it puts a burden, as uh, small as it may be, it puts a burden on her immune system to have a cyst like that. So it's better to get, right. get it out. Now, another reason I'd like you to get it out, if they can lance it, is we'll see if it returns, and then it's not a bug bite at that point. There's some other biochemistry malfunctioning at that point. Right. And my four-month-old grandson, shortly after he was born, um, became very congested. Hmm. And they do have a wood stove in their house. So I don't know. Like That's what I was going to say. It could be uh, particles. Wood stove would be one. Mold. You know, you still mm -hmm. live in a humid climate in Massachusetts. We have a mold. Uh, we didn't set and share this with you, but... When we got back the other night, we were only home two days before we came here, our house was flooded. You know, our uh, heater, water heater, burst, and our entire room and the bathroom was just flooded. And in a mat it, the longer it was is seven days, but it may have been three days. Everything was mold. They actually took the, the clothes out, every bit of our clothes, everything, that, and thank God the, they're taking care of that business. We're going to have to rip everything out. I'm not going to let them do partial going to rip everything out. That's how rapid these things happen. And if the child's healthy, which is interesting, people would think you're weakened if you have a reaction. It may be an extremely healthy child that's more reactive than a weakened child to something like mold. So you've got to check that. And there's, okay. there's little kits you can get now. As a matter of fact, the uh, state of Massachusetts should give these to you, where a little kit will pick up mold spores, and it's either free or practically nothing to do it inside of the house. That would be my first suspicion. It can be the dust, but it's usually dust mites that's causing that. One, one last. Jai sends her love, and sh her five-year-old boy is going to India, and you gave her a list of things to do to keep him healthy. And um, bee pollen, I believe, was yeah. one of the things. Yeah. And she wanted to know if that's up until she he leaves to go to India? No, during the whole time. During the whole time. During the whole time. Because someone said something like, if it's not, um, you know, pollen that's from that area, don't. Well, I, I would bring, yeah, I don't know the, yeah, well, the homeopathic view of that, it's great to get Massachusetts pollen from where you're growing. But the best pollen, hands down, is from high desert regions of the world. And so if you want one that's normally 50 to 75% more nutritive, it would be high desert pollens. Okay. And I'm not sure I would be getting pollen in India. At that <laughs> as much as that is a great theory. You know, look, at, I was Mr. Clean when I was in India working with, with the prime minister, and I got sick. And I mean, I was boiling water so long, everything should have died, including me from drinking it. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Hi. Um, my friend has something called a geographical tongue, where she has... Oh, that's a, a new one on me, a geographical <laughs> tongue. Oh, Any I doctors here you. can explain what that means to me? I stumped you. Um, and she, <laughs> it's all these grooves on her tongue. It looks like, like uh, deep grooves. And I was wondering if you knew anything about it. Her well, mother has it also, and she tells me it's nothing. But now she has this. She had a tumor in her brain just recently. This is the same person same with a geographical tongue has yeah. a tumor in her brain? Yeah, but this is a brand new thing that just happened to her, the tumor. And I thought maybe somehow it was related. I, I don't know. Well, but she's had the geographical tongue her whole life. And uh, now she might have some blood disease. She's going to the Mayo Clinic. But 
that's, I don't know if it was related, so that's why I was asking you. Okay, if you recall what I said about five hours and 14 minutes ago, I actually said that doctors, when I was a little boy, checked your tongue. Mm -hmm. They would put a depressor on and check it. Why? Because they were trained back in the middle and early part of the 20th century to diagnose you. And so I don't know if the brain tumor, but something caused the tongue, the tongue to have right. impediment. Right. It. Okay, that's we know. Uh, I've never heard it called a geographical tongue. Is that really the term they use for this? That's Any doctor call here, me. you know what it is? Uh, ah. What'd she say? We, so you worked in dentistry. So now she just taught me something, both of you. She said, in the dental field, they see this. Obviously, they're looking at the, they're the only guys who look at the tongues now, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doctors, oh, ooky, I don't want to see them. Let me do a scan on you. <laughs> you know. And what she said is that this is commonly understood to be a B vitamin deficiency. Huh? And so, obviously, look at denter, dental literature in the biological dental area, access the geographic tongue and put in B vitamins, and you're going to come up with Google on this, I'm sure. Because if this is known in Maine, pardon? Say it again. Clostitis, yeah. Yeah. You know what? This could become chronic, is what she's saying, leading up to this hot, burning mouth syndrome that people have. And it's, it's annoying. You don't sleep. You can't she's talk. Had it, she's had it her whole life. It never bothered her or anything. But I always. But how old is she now? She's probably 45. Yeah, but that's relatively young. So. The degradation of your health begins at that age, but really in the next 10 to 15 years, there's going to be a hormonal shift mm -hmm. in her health. So thank God it hasn't complicated her life now, but if it's as simple as getting whole food B vitamins and taking whole food B vitamins, why not do it? So even young people have this map in their mouth. Yeah, I think she's had it her whole life. <laughs> That's amazing. So. Well, I learned, isn't that? I love to learn things like that. That's mm -hmm. great. Now I'm going to sound like I know what I'm talking about. To the next dent. I'll tell you a funny dental story. Did I tell you this yet? Stop me if I did. I have my assistants, because it's fun for me, decide with where I'm going to lecture to determine what I'm going to lecture about. And because I do so much, I never look at what's going to happen you know, in advance. I get to London, England this time. Thank God my child teenager, and Anna Maria w were with me, and I said, whoa, what am I going to lecture about tomorrow, expecting it's going to be something I normally lecture? And they said, dentistry. Hmm. I don't lecture about dentistry. I'm not a dentist. I know, at best, a surface amount about dentistry, but a lot more than the average person. So I said, hey, I can't call the medical school. I'm just going to speak about dentistry for two hours and say I can't speak about it. They've now advertised it, and there's going to be 200 people in the room. Okay? So I said to my poor boy, thank God he travels with me. I'm a computer illiterate myself. And I said, we've got to access everything about these points on dentistry. And he did it, and we stayed in the hotel room, and we put it together. And I did a fair to medium thing. But one of the things I pointed out about dentistry in that is that every tooth relates to an organ in the body. And I quoted study after study that I knew about and read. For instance, they did a study on 167,000 women in Germany with breast cancer. And 61% of them had either one or both of the teeth that relate to the breast, one here and one here, uh, with a root canal. Now, it doesn't mean root canals in and of itself alone created that, but when you have a 61% you know, connection, it's a big contributor to it. And so just because you have this geographic a tongue doesn't mean it's not harming or creating a problem that you may not see eminently at this point. That's an interesting question. Silver filling's bad news. Mercury. Remember what Anna put on the board the other night? One filling. Your environmental protection agency said one. I used to have 20 filling. One filling can close a 10-acre lake. My, my whole body should have been closed. <laughs> How many of you had more than one filling? Raise your hand. How many of you had 20 fillings? Raise your hand. Uh, you grew up in the same families I did. Thank you. Thank you. My family loved me with sugar. How about you? 
Now here comes the most intelligent of all questions, I'm sure of that. Because he doesn't have the preconceived notion of what he knows. <laughs> Off you go. Ready to go? Can animals eat, drink E3 lie? Can animals eat what? Drink E3 lie. Oh, you bet. Good question. How that company started before I met with them is literally they were feeding it to animals. So it was only sold for dogs, cats, horse, etc. And at Hippocrates, they decided, because of my urging, they were going to see if people could eat it. So it's as good for your dog and cat, and they'll love it, by the way. Because how dogs and cats heal, and horse heals, they eat what? Grass. They're smarter than we are. So good question. I told you it was going to be a good question. I don't know what happened to the father. The kid's smart, at least. <laughs> Hi, Brian. Okay. Hi. Um, I'm Susan Chancha, and I actually have a question about type 1 diabetes. Um, my daughter's best friend has it. Um, she's 14, and she was diagnosed when she was 12. Her mother is one of my very close friends, but she is not as open-minded as I would like her to be. And I, I, I'm trying very hard to gently but lovingly and persistently persistently encourage her that there's much more that she could do than just the traditional medical route. Right. And um, her, the grandfather happens to be a surgeon, and they're very, like, into this heavy, you know, the medical model is the only thing. But um, not surprising to me, the daughter, they're having a lot of trouble regulating her right now with the amount of insulin and her blood sugar. It, you know, she, sometimes she's a 60 and sometimes she's like a 325. So I am trying to figure out what information I could bring to this family without, you know, even like a little small thing that even if they're not ready to make a very big radical change the way that I would like to, would there be any few little magic bullets that I could give to them, and if you, you know, know a bigger story of how you've helped type 1 diabetes people. Well, I'll try to be comprehensive with this. Uh, type 2 diabetes is not a disease, and 100% of people that have that problem can reverse it. I would like to say that about type 1 diabetes, not so. Out of every 10 people, and I've worked with thousands of people with type 1 diabetes, you have a potential for three of them to eventually come off insulin. Three of them will hardly improve at all, nothing that I would consider success. And four of them can dramatically reduce insulin. So the seven that get benefits that at least are measurable in it are going to reduce the potential for blindness, neuropathies, uh, surgical removal of limbs in the future. And when you're dealing with a child that was diagnosed at 12 and probably had it before, she's the candidate for that. The three out of 10 that we see able to come off insulin are usually the new newbies into type one that didn't uh, have a diagnosis when they were born. So they had the ability to have some functionality of their pancreas. And so they may have contracted it at 15 or 20, and now they're even telling 50 year olds, well, you have type one diabetes. I don't know how true that is. Because, I mean, it's so foreign to what I was taught at school years ago. You know, it was really an easy disease at that point. You had adult onset diabetes. If you were 27 or older, that's what you had. And if it was type 1, it was 27 and below. Well, that was wrong, and now I think what they're saying is wrong. We're going to have to come to a happy medium. Uh, my colleague, and we throw the balls back and forth because they have utter trust in his integrity and his scientific increment, uh, Gabriel Cousins, has focused an awful lot on that. We've done a whole lot more work because we've been around 10 times longer than he has. But the fact is, he's done a lot of work and written about that in a very intelligent and scientifically supported way. And he can explain, if you want to look up Gabriel's work, how you reverse it in a way that maybe the surgeon grandfather, it will break because this is an MD that's writing about things in a way that he may, may be more palatable to him because, you know, they're cerebral. When people are cerebral, they don't want to change most of the time because it's scary out there to do anything other than what everyone else is doing, even if it doesn't work. And so 
getting on this diet without question is going to help this child. And she has the potential to have the same statistics I said. I wish I could find a way to get those, generally those born with it, at three out of 10 that really I'm never happy with. We're gonna make them healthier. Probably they're gonna have, and I can't assure you that less chance of blindness, less chance, but I'm not, you know, it's not measurable enough. They're still swinging a little bit. And, that, and when you say, if that's a factual statement, she's going from 60 to 360, that's scary stuff at that age. That's scary stuff. Her pancreas is working, but not working well, and intermittent. Well, she's on, uh, you know, they keep changing the levels of the insulin that and she And some work, and some don't work, and, you know, the doctor's hands are tied on this. Because the poor doctor really doesn't believe there's any hope for this child, and they're going to be on insulin forever. And any human being, remember, doctors are people. Doctors have children. Doctors have wives. They have husbands. They feel bad because these are the kind of untenable diseases when you don't know what else to do. It can really hurt you when you're there helping a child 14, looking at the poor child and thinking, gee, this is what she's going to do the rest of her life. And she's on injectable insulins now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But again, I mean, I'd strongly advise the mother to do this. And maybe what you say to people like that that are pigeonholed is, why not do this? How could it hurt? But again, if the mother and father are addicts, it's going to be hard to get them to do this because you don't get a 14-year-old to do this unless mom and dad do it. You know, like people say to me, I, had, I was out at a conference many years ago, and there's a sweet little southern vegetarian mother there. And after I talked about raw food, she said, well, I don't know what's wrong. My two-year-old child just won't eat raw food. What's your suggestion, Dr. Clement? And I said, my suggestion is you better hide the car keys. And she says, well, what does the car keys have to do with my daughter? I said, well, obviously, she knows how to drive. She has a budget or money. And she goes down and buys the food. And she comes home and makes it and eats it. She said, no, that's what I do. I said, now we'll get to the answer. <laughs> you follow? Yes, I do. You're feeding your child something. But you know, it's breaking through the addiction of parents when you deal with these poor children. And if the child is being victimized by addictive parents with unshakable belief systems that surround death and demise, it's hard. Well, it's particularly difficult with my friend who is into this whole disease medical model and feels that like even if this girl is having, you know, um, she's just measuring, you know, counting well, that's carbs why and all that I, kind I of I perceive thing. one of my most, if not the most important job, is to make this part of the medical model. So. It's, it's not in the future conversations, we won't be talking about the medical model and lifestyle. We're going to say part of the medical model is lifestyle. I mean, why we have to struggle about that, Lord only knows, but the fact is that's where we're heading. And we hear more and more and more of this, and people are interested. I'm, you know, we're right now working with the University of California on a project to disprove genetics. They came to me. They said, we're not going to invent the wheel. You've been giving low caloric diets to people for almost 60 years. And you have the results. And you have people walking around alive that should have died. We're going to now take stage four cancers, put them on the diet, do the most sophisticated genetic researching there is done, and do it. So I want to go to bed with them, and they want to go to bed with us. And it's really the most open-minded now. But the fact is, there's more and more of those people. Because doctors and researchers are daddies, and they're mothers, and they're brothers and their sisters, and they have fathers, and they, they want results. And the impotence of medicine today is when you, you're using tools that you really never help very much. And if you keep practicing and practicing a medicine that you see no or very little results in, it's horrible on the poor doctor. And that's why a lot of you never see a connection with the doctor, because she or he can't look at you. The opposite is true of ER doctors. They're being fulfilled. It's the toughest, most stressful job, I think, on the planet Earth. Maybe a flight control specialist is equal, but I can't, you know, uh, surgeons, especially emergency surgeons. Yeah. They're being fulfilled because you start a job, you end a job, and it's done, and you see it. You see the results of it. But how about people who don't see the results, and by the way, only hear complaints or never see the patient again? So we have to make that marriage and come together and say, look, it, this isn't a pissing match. We both get wet and stinky doing pissing matches. What we need to do is piss in the same direction and fill up a lake and teach people to swim in the lake. That's where we have to go. And I, have, I think it's a quick question. Um, in terms of sprouts, 
Um, are there certain sprouts that are better for different conditions? Oh, absolutely. In my book, Life Force, the thing I'm most proud about determining and figuring out over the decades is the area that's like a sprout pharmacy. And it goes from A to B to C and tells you this sprout and what disorder it effectively prevents and helps you eliminate. And so that's it. And we have a lot of exotic sprouts in there. It's a lot of fun to read that. Okay, thank you very Take much. Take care. Puts it up and down, short people, tall people, medium people. <laughs> He's very accommodating. Uh, it's me again, Brian. Hi. Um, I have an ascent, what, what is being labeled as an essential tremor. Yeah. Uh, my right hand, which is my writing hand. Um, I've done a lot of writing all my life. Maybe that's partly what it came from. Um, I have a tremor. It makes it very difficult for me to write. Any suggestions? Well, number one, I assume that you've been a good neurologist and they've ruled out Parkinson's? Yes. Okay, thank the God on that. Yes. Okay. Now, I would tell you to take a product, you know, and I, I completely rejected the idea that this would ever work about three, four years ago. Uh, whenever I wanted people to take glutathione, there was only one way to do it. Spend a lot of money and get a doctor to IV it in you. And a company approached me years ago and said, we have a supplement that works, and it was wrong. We spent $900, $1,100, I forget, and we tested several people. We put on that product. There was no increase in glutathione. So when they approached me the second time two or three years ago, I said, hey, you're wrong. I tried that. It doesn't work. And this one worked. And I love to be wrong when something's good. And this time it was. There's a product now called Max One. It's a glutathione product. There is nothing more effective in nutritional science better for you than that. Number two, if you don't have money, you get a manual magnet. Niken, N-I-K-K-E-N, makes by far a very effective, inexpensive manual magnets. They're quarter shape. So you can buy quarter shape. You affix them to the solar plex area of your hand. You put medical tape, so it's, you know what medical tape is, your local mm -hmm. phone. Put it around there, and I want you to sleep with that five or six nights a week, all night long. If you had the money, the use of cold laser therapy is remarkable. But now you're talking about five grand or so, four and a half, five grand, to buy one that really works. You can buy $29 ones, you might as well flush down the toilet. They don't work. So, but there are real significant medical level devices that do work. But again, the magnet's going to go a long way. I would try that first, take the, the, the Max One, and obviously everything else we're talking about work with. Okay, that's Niken or Miken? Pardon? It's Both. Niken, uh, how do you spell it? Niken is the magnets, N-I-K-K-E-N. So Jap you'll find it on the internet. It's all over. There's distributors. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what I think happened? In your last life, you used to be the Queen of England. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you get that? I love that. You know? I'll think about I that. I just like watching the Queen to do that. I said, that's the hippest wave I ever saw, you know? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi, Dr. Bryan. Um, quick question for my mother. She's 73 years old. Uh, she's a workaholic. She works seven days a week selling Subarus. Um, selling Subarus? Yeah, she, you can't get her you out. You must of really love that car. She, she's so passionate. However, um, she's one and a half years post-colon cancer surgery. She only mm. took a week off from her surgery to back to work. Um, she has severe knee, uh, knee arthritis. I guess it, she, she had an x-ray. They said it was bone on bone. Uh, said she needs knee replacement. Another guy she went to gave her injections, like sugar water injections. And we don't, she's like, she can't hardly walk, but she walks and she's bent over. It's, it's sad to see her this way. Would your therapy that you mentioned do anything for bone on bone? To not yes, we, we have numbers of people, uh, be it that this is not the normal circumstance, that had bone on bone that no longer have it just by adapting the program. The majority, it's not enough. Adapting the program is going to be giving the potential to rebuild cartilage, but if you don't have space for the cartilage to grow, it's never going to grow, no matter how much you eat, okay? no matter how many supplements I give you. And there are certain ones I give. But now medicine, thank God, figured out the chemistry that provokes cartilage development in the, in the body. And it used to be they took bone marrow out of a chicken and injected that in, and that worked in about half the cases. This new one is working in about almost every case. It's rare it doesn't work. So you need to get on and look at, this is mainstream medicine, medical approach, and I forget the name, it went right out of my head, but there's a specific chem, uh, um, 
acid. Ironic acid. Thank you. Ironic acid. And what you do is they inject. You'll find somebody here. You're in the New York area. They'll inject it in, and it won't take long. So tell your mother she can still sell Suruburus. If you had to take off a week, forget it. <clears throat> and then once you get that going on, tell her to take a product called Biosil, B-I-O-S-I-L. I take it every day because I weight lift. Tell her to take strontium, little bits of trace minerals, and tell her to take liquid magnesium oil and put it on the outside of her body. Another thing I do daily, I put it on the creases. This is good for a lot of you, better than oral magnesium. Put it on the creases behind your arms, behind your leg, right, left side of pubic hair and heart. And if you, mother, may should do it morning and night. <clears throat> the rest of you, if you don't have a need like that, just one time a day. Great, thank you so much. You're welcome. Let's sing for a minute. They break this up here. Let's sing. Now, close your eyes. Let's go back and forth. We're going to make a language up so you don't have to know the words. Mohulia. Come on. Come on. This is New York. You have no rhythm here? What the hell's wrong with you? I'll do it once again. Here we go. Click, click. Moo yeah moo A moo la mahambala A boomba li ba bam ba do do A boomba li a boomba li A bum 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 balloon ba bum ba de do. We're doing a brain exercise now, people. A bum ba la, a bum ba la. Oh, li bum bum be de lumba ha. A bum ba. A bum ba. <laughs> that first thing you said, my God. I said, where am I? In Kansas or somewhere? <laughs> Any of you guys from Kansas? I'm sorry. Let's pray for them. I <laughs> want to read a wonderful book if you really get a little concerned about politics and the manipulation of the, the American public, you know. Anna Marie and I were perplexed by the fact that they can manipulate people so easily to vote the way that against their own interest. And so a friend of mine said, settle down. This guy wrote a brilliant book called Whatever Happened to Kansas. You want to see what they've been planning ever since the late part of the Carter administration. You'll be surprised. They actually changed the language. Good things they made bad, bad things they made good. And that's why they get half of you to vote against your own benefit. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Up you go. I'm starting to exercise doing aerobic, like you're mentioning, and I'm going to start weightlifting, but I'm getting stiffer as I get older. What would you suggest with stretching or yoga? Well, there you go. You said it. Either you have to stretch or do yogic exercises. And if you were to ask me, Brian, the one exercise you need to do more of, we're now discussing it. We're discussing it. My excuse is that three days a week, I lift my own body weight. And yes, that stretches me, but it also makes me stiffer. You know why? Because when you lift your own body weight, you build muscle quicker, faster than any other way. And so I really need to do more yoga, more stretching. And the older we get, and I mean, when you get to your 80s, you're going to be crippled up if you don't do the stretching. You need to do that. What's, what do you think the best exercise aerobically is if you can find a no chlorinated pool? What do you do in a pool? Swim. It's a perfect aerobic exercise. It's the only exercise that's been monitored to use 100% of your brain and 100% of your muscles. So brain and muscles, 100%. And secondly, it stretches the muscles and relaxes the muscles, your buoyancy against, uh, away from gravity, better than even a great yoga. But great yoga is a second. Hot yoga I love a lot because of the girls there. Come on. <laughs> that's what hot yoga is? <laughs> Thank you. And, and Good, other, you're welcome. The other question is, <laughs> I, I take it your natural hair color. 
Yes, it is my natural and, hair and color. how could I go back to black or at least stop the gray? Well, this is a good question, because 50% of us are prematurely graying. Now, I would like to say it's all sprouts, and I can in great part, because I have bald and graying brothers, one 15 years younger than me. And, but I'd also tell you the truth. My grandfather died at 85 with a full head of thick hair that was dark. He was just starting to get. So it is a bit genetics and a lot lifestyle with me on this. So there are some things, the way you look, for instance, my one leg is shorter than the other. My father is exactly like that. Damn it, I got his nose. <laughs> so there's some things we get like that that are genetic, not the health as much. And so here's what you need to do, and there's a, a test. There's a great company called Eden, E-I-D-O-N, ionic minerals. Ionic meaning electrically charged minerals that fit not only into the biological body and the electric body, but the what body? The etheric body. So it hits all levels of that. An electrically charged Eden. Inexpensive, you get the liquids, and in the morning you take two tablespoons of zinc. At night before you go to bed, an hour before, you take one tablespoon of copper. You do that for three months, and of course live this way in, in the same time. If your hair starts, is going to change back, it will change back in that period. 50% of you are going to be disappointed. There's people who naturally go gray at 30 years old, and that's natural. They could eat like me, do everything else, doesn't matter. So 50% of you brought it onto yourself, even balding. We have at least five people every single year we see come with full heads of white hair, and by the time the program's over, it's coming out dark. Just had one a couple of weeks ago. I mean, like beautiful white hair, you know, the kind of white hair we all like, snow white, and boom, starts to turn black you know, at the bottom. What a malnourishment this person must have had. And they weren't sick, by the way. These were the smart people who come to us. I call them the serious health seekers that come before they're diagnosed with something. So good question. Thank you. All the bald guys here are applauding you now. <laughs> and and what's, what's up with you young guys? You're going bald now on us. Yeah. You're going bald on us. And then when you're not bald, you want to look bald. What the hell, you think that's macho? <laughs> Remember, Hercules had long hair. <laughs> yes. Can you tell us how to put scalar units in a house? Yeah, you have to have a lot of money. <laughs> That's number one. The scalar, scalar units are what help you to eliminate the wireless effect. So the wireless you've installed in your house and the wireless your neighbors are using in downtown where you live, etc. There's a wonderful documentary on wireless. It was filmed in the city. I don't know if you've seen that yet. but. Another thing to scare the hell out of you. But I didn't do a good enough job this weekend with you. <laughs> okay, now, bottom line is, we were lucky because somebody gave us a good donation. And we bought scalar units that not only take care of our 50 acres at Hippocrates, but our neighbors should have gotten a card from us at Christmas saying that we're giving you a gift because an eighth of a mile in every direction around Hippocrates, they're protected too. Now, how it works is not erases all of the electromagnetic static and pollution. What it does is it attracts and neutralizes. Unlike this, it just attracts. This attracts and neutralizes it. Because scalar is the most, not the most, Valerie would correct me on that, Dr. Hunt. It is one of the most subtle, subtle, nuanced frequencies that there are. You don't even pick it up and monitor it. And so, unless, you, unless they came up with what incorrectly is called the string theory in physics, we wouldn't know how we know the string theory has validity is because they can do mathematics and prove that every time they come up with the same dimension, same mathematics, below what we can measure. And that's where scalar units are. And it's, so it's a, a core place that wipes out the static frequencies that whack your body and my body out. I mean, it's just not a good thing. But scalar units, you can call up uh, either directly to my office or call the front desk and say to the girl at the front desk, because one's installed, stand up. Look behind you, because I'm having a mind fart here. I forget the name of the company. Right behind her desk, you can, she can tell you the name of the company. And you can access it online. What I'm hoping for and praying for, and people keep dancing around in circles on this with me, is that we have one that's inexpensive. Everyone can put in their homes and apartments. So far, these things are intense. And can you also talk about parasites? And how do we know if we have parasites? Okay. This is a great New York story. You're going to appreciate this. 
Uh, some 20 years ago, uh, when I first met Stephen Schur and his family, uh, I had a, an office in New York City. And my partner was this extraordinary, instinctual, brilliant, wonderful, humble doctor, uh, Dr. Sacrin, who had never been anything but a natural doctor. He got out of graduate, he got out of medical school, he became a natural doctor. And just intuitively, instinctually, he just never wanted to prescribe medicine. He was a big heart, beautiful man. And I worked with him, he was in his 80s, and he taught me so much. He taught me to shut my head off and my mouth up many times, because he would sit in a room with five women. We'd see 30 people a day. I'd spend three, four days in New York City. And he'd sit in the room with five women, all 30 years old, with breast cancer in the left breast, and say radically different things to them. And it was just confusing to me. I'd say, you know, if I saw th you know, three, five women 30 years old with that, I would be telling them similar things. He said, well, you don't see it? And I said, no, I don't see it. And that's where he said to me, shut up and listen to what they're saying. Don't tell them what you know. They're not here to listen to you, by the way. They're here to have you listen to them. So he was the guy that taught me that. And then once I shut up the brain, I still didn't get it, by the way. It took me years and years and years to get, I guess, maturity with it. And as soon as you listen to people, they're pretty much telling you what they need. And then you see that there's different causes. It may be a cause, you know, many times I'm talking to somebody with a breast cancer, their husband left, it, left them. Or they have a child that's on drugs now. And once I find out the timeline on that type of thing, then I realize it wasn't because of the bra they were wearing first. Yes, the bra contributed to the steaks and chicken they were eating contributed to. It. But the shock, and then two months later, they end up with a lump. That's what contributes. So we've got to listen to these things. I'm actually talking about parasites. Yeah, but I'm telling you, I'm going to get into parasites. So we had a woman, we had a woman that was brilliant. And Anna Maria trained her. She was about as good as Anna Maria on diagnostics with the old school stuff, the microscope stuff. And she was from Australia, lived downtown in the city in Manhattan. And we would look at every person. Now, obviously, I saw 99% of the people I saw were from New York City. Nobody didn't have a parasite. You live in this area, it is incredibly likely that you have a parasite. It's like a surprise if you don't, let's put it that way. And so one night, it was the 30th guy I was seeing or person I was seeing. He was a kid, 23 years old. He didn't have parasites, but he had a New York City address. And I said, how long? I finally, I sort of came out of a stupor, and I said, how long have you lived here? He said, three days. I didn't want to say, you wait, like my father. <laughs> but you know, how? How do you get parasites? Do you have to have intimacy with people? Well, that's surely a way. On a door handle, people sneeze in the bus or in the plane behind you. People are coughing next to you. These are airborne, and there's many parasites we can see, like the obvious pinworms and tapeworms, but there's microscopic parasitic activity that are very pervasive. If you have Dr. Galland in New York City, that's probably, I've relied on him many times with odd exotic parasites, and uh, he's a great guy to see if you have a real problem with, with him. But most of the time, I know in my family, our first three children that are away living out, we just send them. Uh, this very strong Ayurvedic uh, life give paragon that we made years ago, and that's enough to purge them. Now, listen closely. There's 20% of parasites that I will prescribe for you a pharmaceutical drug. The herbs are not enough to kill them. So there are some parasites that herbs in and of themselves, in almost every case, isn't enough. So you need and again, if you go to the average pharmacy or medical doctor, she or he doesn't know what, they, what you're talking about. So you have to go to the specialized doctor, like a Galand or somebody else, who, uh, you know, the doctors who were trained in South America and India all get this, the mainstream medical doctors. So you may find a good one where you live, who's an Indian doctor who was trained in Bombay or someplace. What do they call Bombay now? Mumbai. Yeah, say? Mumbai. Mumbai, excuse me, Mumbai. Yeah, boy, shame on me for saying that. So do but, fecal tests uh, tell you what kind of parasites you have? Yeah, we, we finally got rid of the expensive one. That was good. I mean, smoky labs, great lab. But the fact is they were charging $400. Now we have one that's a little over $100. We don't make a cent in it. You're an alumnus, so you send for a poop kit. Just ask for the poop kit. We send it to you. You send it. You go through the act, and you send it out to Arizona. They send the results back, and that's how we can really tell you what you have. Again, we can see it with the undermed and the cyber scan, but we want to know the name of it 
and what it looks like, that's how we do it. And can one still get a blood test for the nutrients, the, what is it, the spectro cell? Oh, sure you can. Uh, wh where are you living exactly? Maryland. Maryland. Maryland, yeah, we'll find somebody. Dr. Yu is in Maryland. So write me or call my office Wednesday when I'm back in the office, and uh, we'll, get, we'll find somebody for you there. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. I have a family member who has had a stuffy head and eczema on and off since she was a little girl. And then another family member as an adult just last year started getting the eczema and then the stuffy head constantly. So are they related and what can they do about that? They are related. Uh, I had eczema all over my body when I started to like girls. Remember the Protestant I kissed? <laughs> I was ashamed. I was embarrassed. It was all over my face, all over my body. Why? Because when I was two and a half, the only time in my life I died was from asthma. If you have eczema, you have a lung problem. Not maybe, not possibly. This isn't a theory. This is an anatomical fact. So anytime you see eczema, real eczema, a lot of misdiagnosis with eczema, but real eczema, it's because the respiratory system of the body is not working. How does that relate to the head? If we're not getting enough oxygen, into the neurons, into our brains through the blood-brain barrier, you're going to have a head problem. And when you have less than the desirable or biologically necessary amount of oxygen, you have a greater potential for infection, inflammation in the head. And if you look at the Duke University studies on this, it was just remarkable, no, excuse me, it wasn't Duke, it was uh, Mayo Clinic studies on respiratory problems. They said why the antibiotics do not work in chronic long-term respiratory concern is they go deep below the surface tissue. So you, have to, you can't do anything with an antibiotic ever. It doesn't work. So what you need to do is you need to go back and use lasers. You know, they're not exactly surgical lasers, but they're not what I'm talking about. These are non-invasive ones. There are doctors now, usually the young hotshots that got out of school in the last five years, that would know how to do this laser procedure. So if it's a sinus-related one, the laser used on that, definitely the eczema is a lung. Uh, I'm not supposed to tell you this in the United States of freedom, but I'm going to tell you this anyway. That in other civilized nations in the world, and I learned this from a former F NFL coach. See how interested I am in football. Forgot what it was. But the reality is, he said, you know, when all guys get sick and we're paying them millions of dollars, these bums got to come out and they got to play. So some crazy guy like you told us to take eucalyptus oil and make them drink it. And hey, you know what happens? They come out and they play most of the time. So I said, gee, that sounds interesting. And so I started to use pure 100% eucalyptus oil orally. <gasps> oh, United States of Freedom, you can't say that. You can't use it orally. Pardon? You put it in orally, so you take five drops, in a, it tastes horribly bad. I like anything, I don't like this. It's this much water or juice, not Tropicana orange juice, green juice, and you shoot it down like you would a shot of whiskey, and then you drink something nice after that. And you could do that three times a day, and every two weeks you take a week off, and you may see great results respiratory, but I, they don't get rid of the wheat, they don't get rid of the flour products, they don't get rid of the dairy, they don't get rid of all of the meat, wheat, all of that business, they probably are not going to get well. You know, my eczema went away in two months after I became a vegan. Boom, so went away, it was like a miracle. In, in a week it was half gone, so two months it was So that's the first thing we do. Yeah, pardon? So that's the first wing thing we recommend is... No, no question. Go, go to the, the new After doctor. using this on 10,000 people, it works in great part. Not 100%, but boy, it's a big, big percentage. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey. Uh, two questions. I've lost my sense of smell. And I'm Usually it's a B6 deficiency. And I'm fearing my taste buds also. Pardon? And I'm fearing that um, I'm starting, I think, to lose my taste also. Yeah. You have two problems. You have an essential oil deficiency, and you have a B6 deficiency. They're almost always, I would say, eight out of ten times we give that to you, you won't have the problem. So you have to get a whole food B6 and get it in a complex, like you know the, the um, vitamin code mm -hmm. B complex. And you need to get 
omega oils, but the good ones like hemp oil, or better yet, hemp seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds, and let's upload you. Take whatever you want, take twice as much. And let's do that for about a month, and you should see a difference in that. Unless you had a damage of some type occur. Did you have surgical procedures or anything? No. no. Yeah, it's most likely what we said. Okay. Yeah. And the other uh, is the statistic I remember um, 10 years ago. I may be incorrect, but um, if somebody goes down to Hippocrates for three weeks and is 100% faithful to the whole program and does everything you ask them to do, they can detox by 60%. Is that still? No, this is a good, a good question. We didn't do this work. The, Dr. Arthur in San Diego, uh, before you know it, this dear soul uh, was just a general practitioner, wasn't rich, but ended up taking a quarter of a million dollars out of her pocket because she was just enthralled by people who reversed cancer after she thought they were going to die. And so they got on the Hippocrates program. She followed them, and she said, well, how is this happening? She was just inquisitive. She was a good doctor. And she found out that in the first seven days, that we eliminate 60% of the waste from our body on the average. So that's why when you first start to, you pull the plug from the American diet and eat this, you feel like you're hit by a truck in the first 24, 48, 72 hours, because just the stuff is spewing out of you. Now, your body takes seven years to regenerate. So from that day forward, six years and 51 weeks more, it slowly gets rid of the other 40%. Now, that's average. and. It, and there are exceptions, but that's why you feel bad when you first do this. Yeah. So, yeah, you have a good memory. That's good. <laughs> At least you, you have your memory, not I, your smell. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's a good selling point. That's a good. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. thanks. I'm watching him. Um, my husband has been diagnosed with something called lynchin planus. Um, I didn't hear that part. Lincoln or lynchin planus. Okay. It is one of those autoimmune uh, yeah. skin diseases. Um, he did have the mercury removed from his mouth about two years ago. Um, however, the doctor who removed the mercury was not an environmental dentist. Uh, I'm not sure how he had them removed. Yes. <laughs> um, his health has not been 100%. He's also had a spider bite. He's had a lot of allergies. So what do you suggest? Well, number one is, I'll repeat again, I don't believe there's any such disease as an autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. I don't believe the immune system goes nuts and attacks you. I believe you've worked really hard to make your immune system want to go on strike, either in great part or partially. Now, if you have the typical American husband... He's Italian, he's worse. Oh, Maron, now you're in big <laughs> trouble. Oi, oi, oi. Hey, what are you talking about? Give me some meatballs. <laughs> How many Italian guys are here? Raise your hand. Hey, what are you talking? <laughs> I'll tell you about Italians. We'll, we'll divert our attention. When I was a kid, I thought I was Italian. I literally spoke Italian. You know why? Back in those days, the grandmothers lived in the converted basement or garage, and they were the ones with the food. So before you know it, I was always with them hanging out because they had what? Food. <laughs> And I spoke Italian, so the nuns were always so excited. Listen, he speaks Italian, you know, the Italian nuns. Oh, he speaks Italian, so wonderful, it's so cute. So when I'm like nine years old, I say to the nun, uh, I'm Italian, that's why I know Italian. She says, you're not Italian, you're Irish, I know your family. And I went home, I was really perplexed and confused. I said to my mother, what part of Italy would we come from? She says, you're not Italian, you're Irish. I cried for half the day. <laughs> But I know the Italians. I mean, you know, the men are funny. The men are funny. But the reality is, quite simply, even an Italian, the good news with Italian people, they have big, big hearts. That they use their hearts better than other cultures, generally. Generally. And even the mob. I, when I was a kid, there were some of my friends that had fathers that owned restaurants. They all had black limousines. <laughs> Even these bums that were doing nasty things were nice people. <laughs> it was like a really weird thing. So you have a chance to change him. And you can say to him, listen, you know, I know you don't want to do this, and you have to tell him all the reasons that you think they're going to resist this. And you're going to say, but let's just try this at first. Now, you can't give a guy like that too much to do at once. It, it will blow him up. You know, he won't be able to do that. But you say, let's do baby steps like this. Now, the very first thing that we need to do, if he's eating a lot of meat, is let's just reduce it. Let's reduce the meat, rather than say, hey, be a vegan, forget it, he's not going to do it. 
So now we reduce it. Say, hey, how many times a week are you eating meat? Well, I'm eating meat seven days a week. So let's do it four days a week. But you don't put him on the Hippocrates diet. You put him on make-believe meat the other three or four days a week. And there's enough of this garbage today that's a whole lot better than meat that is, tastes like meat, they say. We, had a, we have a friend. She's married to a guy that makes Archie Bunker look like a liberal. I mean, I've just, and about, she's committed to this because she healed liver cancer on the program. And that was 25, 30 years ago, before we left for West Palm, so it was in Boston. And she called me about a decade ago and said, I can't take another day making, you know, all of this garbage for him. She was frying bacon for him and salami and kielbasa and all this in butter. She said, I can't do it anymore. She said, I'm going to start feeding him a vegan diet, but I'm not going to tell him. I said, it's not going to work. I was wrong. It worked. And every time I used to see the guy, he used to yell people's name. See, how are you doing, Brian? You know, he'd grab you, Brian. You know, he'd almost break your arm. So I saw him a couple of years after she put him on this make-believe meat vegan diet. It was I, it's so different. He walked up and said, how are you doing? <laughs> so you may be able to do a little bit of the stuff without even talking about it. You're the, you're the wife. You're the one that can straighten this out. Number two, he's not going to give up pasta. There's a wonderful thing that tastes we switched, like... We switched to quinoa pasta yes. and brown rice pasta. So I'm going to switch you one step further. Okay. There's something called mung bean noodles that the Asians use. They don't put weight on you. They don't give you allergens. They're made out of mung bean sprouts. And they're clear noodles. Mung bean clear They have rice, but get the clear noodles from mung beans. And then you start getting rid of the heavy tomato sauce. It tastes better, by the way and start making organic red pepper sauce because the tomato is highly acid. I'll give you another Italian story. Kid, we get out of high school. He said, I'm not going to go to college. I'm going to open up an auto body store, you know, Phil Rizzo. And we all go to college, and we're mumbling, oh, the poor guy. You know, so we get out of college. Five years later, he sold his five auto body stores for $10 million. Okay. So, he wanted to always relate to us, and we'd come home for the holidays and in the summertime, and Phil said, you got to come over to my shop. I've got to show you something you'd be interested in. I said, what? So he shows me the book on auto body. This is a true story. And I open it up, and he points to it, and he says, look what they tell me to do. When I can't get the paint between the crack in the door when it opens up, he said, look what they tell me to put on that. Tomato sauce. I'm going to stop eating that shit, he said. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I look in an auto body thing. And then he said, hey, that's not all. He said, you know, you tell me not to eat soda. I stopped eating soda, too, drinking soda. He opened up the book, and it looked. It said, when you had sap from a tree on a window, to use Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola. And we're drinking this stuff and giving it to our kids. The red pepper tomato sauce tastes better than, sweeter than, nicer than the tomato. Move over to that. And then al dente. You know, you take all of this stuff and put vegetables in it. Don't overcook them the last minute steam them or that type of thing. So at least you have more minerals. The vitamins are gone, but the minerals are there. This is the way you do it. Then the other thing is, is he, is he active? Is he overweight? Does he exercise? He's a martial artist. He has his own dojo. He's a what? He has his, he has his own uh, dojo. He's a martial artist. Oh, good. He's still I thought you overweight. said he has his... No. <laughs> <laughs> thought we were talking He's... dirty here late yeah. in the day. <laughs> He's got his mojo going. Well, he's Italian. You didn't he's have to tell us that. <laughs> like we didn't know that. <laughs> Why you girls are attracted to these Italian guys? I know. <laughs> okay, so he's in good shape. He's he's overweight. Okay. He could kick your butt, but he's overweight. I bet you. I bet you. Those guys, you know, they scare me. What you need to do, what you need to do is that's how you touch a guy like that. You touch a guy like that. You say to him, "Hey, you know, honey." I love you, and you, had, you used to have the most beautiful body in the world. Now look at you. <laughs> so let's go on this little bit of diet, but don't drag him too far because he's going to scream and run back. Now, the other thing is if he's a machivo Italiano, is he? Not a stupido, but a machivo. <laughs> but what you have to say to him is, look it, do you realize, and I can feed you some of this stuff, you can get on the internet, that the more meat you eat, the more feminine you become. This is how you get the guy. Oh, what are you talking about? What are you saying to me? I'm going to eat the, I'm going to get like that if I take the meat. So you, you feed him stuff like this. Slowly but surely, you feed him. Before you know it, he's going to start to fall into 
thing. But you know, the fake meat is a good thing. Even though a lot of it's made today without soy. You don't want to give them a lot of soy before you know you're going to be walking like this together. <laughs> He'll stop that diet immediately. I'm sure of that. <laughs> You're welcome. Mung bean noodles. We actually eat that at our house about once every two to three weeks. Best place to get them is Chinese markets. You can buy them at the whole wallet market for 32 times the price. So. <laughs> yes. Hi, my name is Deborah. Um, my mom has um, hiatal hernia. She has a narrowing of the esophagus and acid reflux, and she was put on omniprazole. I tried to transfer her over to the enzymes, but she didn't have luck with it. So do you have specific products that you Oh, yes. There's certain that things that one can use. And uh, she has everything that you talked about with your mom relate. They interrelate with one. Yeah. Hiatal hernia, so-called auto reflux, which is, you know. Now, what you do is you take pure 100% organic apple cider vinegar. You put two tablespoons into 16 ounces of pure water. And you let her drink that twice a day. You know, if she's older, you don't want her to drink that after dinner, so it would be ideal in the morning and somewhere in the afternoon before she eats dinner. Number two, there are major good anti-acids, mo mostly made of sodium bicarbonate, which is baking sodas, without aluminum, without aluminum, that you can buy in pill forms that don't say sodium bicarbonate, they're anti-acids. So now you give her something she can relate to. I've been popping other pills, so I relate to these natural pills. This is number two. And then I would bet money she has a gluten allergy when she has this. And so either she can be tested for that or just say, hey, mom, I love you. Let's have an experiment here. Let's get rid of, look up all the grains, easy now with the internet. Get rid of all the gluten grains, all of the things and see how she reacts over a one month period. You know, so do it from February 1st, you have a short month. What is it, 29 this year? And so do it for that 29 days. And if it's what I suspect, uh, she's gonna be radically a different woman within that period of time. Okay, and one more question. I tend to have a lot of aches and pains all over my body. You ache all over your body? Yes. There's you think it's that I disco said, dancing you're doing every night? No, I'm just, I'm just really <laughs> tired and you're saying I may be too acidic. Well, I know a little bit about you. Can I share it with them? Okay. Okay. Uh, the doctor saw she, that she had a problem, so immediately, because they love to just take female parts out, because like the other young lady said, oh, you don't have a need for those. You've had babies. That's a, a real sexist attitude, by the way. You know, there's a lot of needs for organ parts. It's like the same stupidity they try to teach me at school, where they said the appendix has no place. So what are you, crazy? The, they used to say that about tonsils. Anyone that had your tonsils removed when you still got sick, guess what? Where you used to get sick is in the throat. Years ago when I got sick, always hit my throat first. Why? It has a place. And the same thing with female organs. Now, when we remove, especially with a young lady like you, that all your body's functional and ready to go, the epicenter of language, that's the female parts. And that was removed with you. No wonder you have aches and pains. Because your body no longer is biochemically balanced. This does everything from slow down circulation to impair the electromagnetic meridian system that we talked about earlier, et cetera. Now, it sounds bad, but the reality is by doing the kind of things we talked about now, we're never going to replace organs that are gone, but we can take up the part in great, great amount that is going to create the kind of things like pain and, and, and uh, softness and sadness around your body. This can be done. And as we talked earlier, I cannot emphasize how important it is to bring the hormones, the correct hormones in. Always, 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 always. The first question you ask the bioidentical hormone doc, how many years have you done this? They said 10 years, not happy. They said 20 years, start to become happy. They said 30 years, that's who you see. And then, just because it's 30 years, see if they burn out, if they're just doing this to make money, or if they still are nice. If they're still nice people, you stick with them. Who cares? Are you worrying about offending the doctor? Get up and walk out if you don't re resonate with him. It's like a friend of mine recently. Uh, there was this brilliant surgeon that I sent them to, that I trust. This, if I ever had to have surgery, I'd send I'd go to that surgeon. I'd send my children to that surgeon. She went and she didn't like him. And she thought I was going to be angry, so she was afraid. I said, you don't like him, you don't do surgery. I said, what do you think is going to happen? The whole time you're under sedated, you're going to be thinking something's wrong. 
you know, here. Don't do that. Find somebody you like. So she found a guy, and what's really interesting, she found a guy as good as him and liked him. <laughs> so sometimes you have to do these things no matter what we say. Okay. And what was the name of that um, doctor again you said? Doctor, the closest one I, there's probably good guys right here on Long Island. I don't, I can't address it, and I don't know them and know their work. I can't tell you their name. And they may be excellent guys in this room. But the fact is Dr. Bazan, an Italian doctor, not an Italian-American, an Italian doctor, trained in Italy. I trust this guy. He looks, let me show you what kind of guy he is. About four or five years ago, I get a call and this guy says, I want to be trained by you. I said, we have no formal thing other than the health educator program, and I'm not everything in that. You could train. He said, no, I want to be trained by you. I said, why? He said, I had two of my patients that recovered from cancer coming there. I said, he, he said, well, he said, I heard that you were an open guy and you sound like you're not. I like him. And so I said, I said, I'll call you back. And I was wondering how I'm going to work with this guy. And like, I got up the next morning. He said, what an asshole I am. I called him up and I said, come down and sit with me. He closed his office, spent two weeks, sat at my desk, and taught me things along with learning things at that point. And that's how I got to love that guy. And have watched him, 100 people helped him with bioidentical. <coughs> Maryland, Dr. Yu, my favorite of all. You know Dr. Yu? Yeah, Dr. Yu, 1968, started with bioidentical hormones. A renowned surgeon, bright, bright man. Hi, good afternoon. My name's yeah. Theo. Um, I have a question regarding drinking water. I know we talked about it a little. <clears throat> I'm totally confused between <clears throat> the distilled. Uh, doc, I took a lecture with Dr. Mercola, Brenda Cobb. They're saying don't drink distilled water. It's dead. Uh, it leaches minerals out of your body. Um, you're saying it's good for you. Other people are telling me the Kangen filter. Uh, what's the, I know drinking out of plastic bottles isn't good. Spring water is questionable, and people stop buying plastic bottles. Okay. Well, let, let me give you science, not marketing, opinions, and misinformation. Okay. Do I look like I have a bone problem? No. For 41 years, I've consumed approximately a gallon of distilled water a day. UCLA said to me about, oh, eight, nine years ago, I want to test your bones and your body because everyone's telling me how healthy you are. When I walked out, they said, you are extremely healthy. You're like a man in your 30s, and I was 50s at that point. And they said, but what really impressed us is that your bone structure is like our 22-year-old football players. Let me show you their results and your results. Okay. I've been drinking every day at least three quarts, if not a gallon, of distilled water. So yep. let the philosophers have a debate with me on that one. Do you put For, minerals back into the water? No. After it's distilled? No, I eat food that has minerals in it. Okay, now, if you, in fact, believe that H2O has the ability to come into your body, this is hydrogen and oxygen, and knock on the door of your cell, and say to your minerals that are already in the cell, come out, out, I want to eat you because I'm dead water. And if you believe that the minerals say, okay, I'm going to come out so you can eat me, I'm going to sell you land in the Everglades and take the money and give scholarships to people. Because it's absolute bullshit, and it has about as much to do with science as flying saucers. Well, maybe that does, I don't know. <laughs> Probably better than flying saucers. And ionization, that's yeah. out the window too? There is not an ionizer on the planet Earth except Atmos, A-T-M-O-S, that is getting distilled water from the atmosphere and alkalizing it, that has a filter on it that's worth anything. The $4,000 Kangen has a filter on that Brita is a better filter than. It does not take out chlorine, it does not take out fluoride, and it certainly doesn't take out the pharmaceutical drugs. Then you're going to have people that tell you spring water is great, the classic case in that was an affluent community here in northern New Jersey where every child born in a period of time had leukemia. The difference between that community, they had money and brains. And they said, we've got to discover why this happens. They all had five and ten acre plots that they had wells on. When they traced it back, this goes back 25, 40, 30 years ago, they found a factory 200 and some miles away in Pennsylvania were dumping something that went on an underground water river and ended up in their wells in New Jersey. Spring water is highly contaminated. 
every bit of water on this earth, as of three months ago, 90% of the drinking water that people consume was tested. 100% of the drinking water has pharmaceutical drugs in it. No system other than distillation, either air distillation or distillers, remove for the average person pharmaceutical drugs. Now, you can listen to people squawk and yell and scream, and you can, you can talk to a voice of experience and science. You can also know that I used to talk about 20 years ago, five and $6,000, $7,000 RO units. That's before we understood the concern of pharmaceutical drugs. They don't work. I know people that have $10,000 units in their house. They do not take out the pharmaceuticals. There is a system, if you have a lot of money, and I wish I did to do this, it's a whole house system. I can give you the name of a guy in Santa Barbara, California. And if you have a giant mansion, it's going to cost you $50,000. If you have a house my size, it's going to be $40,000. And the whole house, showers, everything will be without pharmaceutical drugs. Other than that, I'm relegated to, I'm sure the vast, vast majority of you are relegated to one choice. It's not confusing. If you drink distilled water in one form, you will not get pharmaceutical drugs. If you do any other form, other than a $50,000 unit, $40,000, you will get pharmaceutical drugs, and you could be me and do everything else right and still be sick. Now, here's a concern with pharmaceutical drugs. It's not only Mary and Joe's in your neighborhood's pharmaceutical drug, it's every pharmaceutical drug that's ever been taken since the history of pharmaceutical drug in your region of the world. That's not the scary part yet, because they don't break down for 50 to 100,000 years. Number two, it's a mixture of these medicines. What is an anticoagulant with an antidepressant? It's not good. As a chemist, I can tell you. I don't know what it does, but I can tell you it's not good. What is a chemotherapy medicine? Oh, yeah, that, does, that doesn't break down for 100,000 years or more. What is a chemotherapy or radiation medicine? As a young lady articulated, don't go near your loved ones for 48 hours after you get this. Okay. Mixed with an antidepressant. <clears throat> Do you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you can either listen to me or listen to the philosophers that are selling something. It's up to you. Make a choice. I also have a, another question uh, regarding what are your thoughts on intuitive healing? I think that there's bullshitters and I think there's intuitive people. I just talked about one who didn't know he was intuitive, Dr. Sacrin. He was the best psychic I've ever been around in my life, but if you said the word psychic, he would have punched me. <laughs> it's intuition. <laughs> you know, and you have it and I have it. Just some people exercise it and utilize it. But the fact of the matter is, why not believe in that? I have a friend who went to one for about nine months. Mm -hmm. uh, she looks like she came out of a POW camp, lost a tremendous amount of weight, looks sicker than she did before. And this doctor's giving uh, medical advice on the phone. Well, he may be a schmo. And then I, I could name 100 people that I know that did that, and I could name 100 people that basically, things that we never discovered, they discovered, then we had it diagnosed, and they were right. So, you, you know, it's just like saying doctors. They're great doctors and bad doctors. They're great institutions and bad institutions. They're great colleges and fair co colleges. So you can't, you can't be prejudiced on this. It would be like saying all Jewish people are bad or all Irish people are bad or all black people are bad. You don't do that. There's good ones and bad ones, and it's not make-believe and not Mickey Mouse. And you've got, at least, I don't know what you've got to do. What I choose to do in my life is stay open to things if it has a relevance and can help people. And when I see it help people, and I see... 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, and I, then I challenge the so-called psychic or intuitive, and they give me the right answer, then we diagnose it. What am I going to say? They're wrong? Because mm. it's not comfortable for me to think about that? You know, I went to, this is a great story on this. Years and years ago, when I was incredibly cocky and thought I knew everything at 30, there was this fellow that I happened to meet that was formerly a, a raging alcoholic and drug addict and took the original mind changing program called Silva Mind Control. Any of you ever hear of this? Created by Jose Silva, and this is a great story. Jose Silva was a, not an educated man. He was a shoemaker or something, a Mexican-American on the border of the United States and Mexico. And one thing he knew is his children were getting incredibly bad education. That his children couldn't go to college, couldn't go to high school with the kind of education they were getting. So devised a way without having an academic understanding to educate them rapidly. 
Now, what ends up happening, and his children are all growing and they're going to colleges and getting scholarships, is a Catholic priest in his parish basically comes and says to Jose Silver, how come every one of your children are smart? And he didn't say the next sentence, you know, your wife and you aren't that smart. You're poor people living in a ghetto. He didn't say that part, but I'm sure that's what he was thinking <laughs> at that point. And Jose Silver sits down and enthralls this priest and shows him how he devised a way to get education and information into the mind that was radically unique and like almost spiritually ordained. That's where silver mind control came out of. This guy healed alcoholism, did, tried everything else, alcoholism and, and, and uh, drug addiction. Too. Love this guy. He was just always positive, always happy, always nice, was living right, everything else. He kept saying to me, you gotta come to my class. It's a two-day class like a lot of you thought on last week. Should I come to this? You know. okay. I said, two days, and I kept making excuses. I've gotta go here, I've gotta go, even when I didn't have to go anywhere, I was telling. So he was smart. Just like the, when the mob wanted me to lecture, they did the same thing. They called up my assistant and says, does Brian really have something to do this weekend? And she slipped and said no. So a car shows up on Friday, and he picks us up. And there's another couple just like us that made excuses for four years. <laughs> They're there too. So he makes it for two couples and another, another guy. And he says, by the end of this weekend, we're going to be teaching you about psychic healing. And I, you know, this stuff just really turned me off. I said, what are you talking about, psychic healing? And it wasn't really psychic healing. How many of you ever did silver mind control? You know what I'm talking about. Amazing stuff. So I said, no way in a million, I'm going to make sure I don't do what he's saying. You know, I'm going to go out of my way to say, there's no way this is going to work. You know, forget it, not me. By the end of the program, he actually convinced us, when we got rid of all the preconceived notions, how you could actually tap into the intuition that you have and come up with the right answer. And it was working. I mean, we weren't 100% hitting. You know, we weren't the Yankees some of these years. But the fact of the matter is, we were getting the answer right seven out of 10 times. And people were writing down things. on, And it was about letting go of the brain again and using the what? Exactly what he taught me. I guess in part, I learned that from there. Beginning, I was just a young kid. And boy, it radically changed me. Boom, like this. I realized, oh my God, I'm not who I think I am. I'm much bigger and better than I think I am. And so, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of it. But there's a lot of charlatans out there. A lot of charlatans out there. And in everything. In the healthcare field as well. In the natural healthcare field. Matter of fact, in medicine, at least you have to go to school and get a credential. In the healthcare field, you can just get on the internet and call yourself an expert at this point. I mean, it's crazy stuff. You know. So you. those guys at least did their chops. <laughs> <laughs> Studying holistic nutrition and hoping to work with kids. Wondering um, what you think of basically how to, how to get kids that are used to the SAD, you know, SAD diet, um, eating in school, and think, you know, even kids that eat organically, how to, I mean, aside from juicing and things like that, I mean, it's a given, but it obviously it takes a little more than that to get them to that point. Yeah, and what you have to do is you have to have a school administrator who's progressive. And that woman or that man has to be willing for you to educate the families, not the children. You teaching the children make the families angry. But as a mother, having a child who basically eats organic, but, you know, how so do I get This is him? not about your work. This is about both. your child? Both. Okay. Well, let's give both answers then. Okay. <clears throat> so the first answer is getting the administrator to be open so that you or somebody else come in and educate the families. So... In, in the school I'm on the board of directors with, many years ago I said, listen, let's get the families in here, I'll explain it to them. Now, why I'm part of this school is we bring in kids who are the poorest kids in Palm Beach County, and we have people who from, are from Palm Beach in the school. It's an equalitarian school. My kids know as much about Jewish holidays and African American events as they do you know, Anglo-Saxon and Catholic events. And so the reality is, that's the environment I want my kids in. Brought these people in, some highly educated people. Ivy League. They were the hardest ones. They were the most addicts. There was one family that in the morning, every day, they were driving these kids to school, two kids. They'd stop at McDonald's, fast lane, get food. And coming home at night, at least five days a week, we saw them, they got McDonald's going home. One graduated Princeton, the other Stanford. Okay. Thickest, hardest one to get to. We finally brought them around. And punchline is, I said, look, 
You tell me you love your kids. I know you must think you do. You bring them here to be educated, and then you bring them and poison them. They said, how dare you say that? You're not their parent. I said, but I am a parent. And I said, I will repeat to you. You may be thinking you're going to make them strong academically, and they'll know a lot, but they may know a lot as they're in the hospital fighting cancer or some other problem. So where that disconnect is only comes from your own frail, addictive nature. I, mean, I was taught by a mother who was a food addict to be a food addict. You follow? And where my mother learned to be a food addict was her parents went through very hard times. Wars, two wars, depressions. And what they learned is one thing. The skinny people got really sick and died first. And the more chubby you were, the less sick you got, and you didn't die as quick. So this whole American diet thing didn't come out of nowhere. It initiated before the food industry put addictive substances in with your desperation, your grandparents and great-grandparents trying to overfeed you. The only thing I ever heard about nutrition or food in my house is eat, eat more. And what was weird, I loved everyone. So every ethnic family I went to, be it black or be it Jewish or be it Catholic, I mean, they were all feeding us. And you ever, Did I ever say no? <laughs> Forget it. So I got bigger and bigger, and they never said I was fat. I was like a pioneer in obesity. They said, you're big. And I said, big, that's great. Since I'm not tall, I'm big at least. You know? So I got big. You know, this is what happens to us. So that's what you're dealing with. Now, as a mother, you have got to commit yourself to three things. Focusing on self and survival. Committing yourself to you, not a program. You don't want to get, we don't want devotees. I'm not interested in devotees of Hippocrates' program. I'm interested in you being devoted to yourself. And then following through. And how I broke my trend of being 100% stupid to 40% stupid, and I keep getting a little better, it takes a long time, you know, is by following through, acknowledging what I just achieved so I can achieve more the next time. Do you follow that? The follow through is the punchline. Focusing on self is important in survival, but commitment is not as important as following through, so acknowledge it. And so maybe your first thought is, I'm going to eat for the next week vegan diets. Don't even say raw diets. You're not fighting cancer, who cares? Fighting cancer, you better get on the bandwagon here. Okay. Uh, wow, isn't that great? Do you realize next Saturday night or Sunday night, you could say, I've just gone one week eating 100% vegan diet? Now you say, boy, follow through, acknowledgement. Foundation. I'm going to go for 15 days now, and I'm going to eat not only vegan diet, but 50% of my diet is going to be raw food. You're talking about the moms or the kids now? I'm talking about you first. Okay. Your kids aren't the issue. You're the issue. Right. Remember that. You're the issue, not your kids. And so okay. bottom line is you do this. And now before you know it, in three or four months, you're ready to launch the new family. Now they're not going to think you're lying. Because mommy's going to probably be 25 pounds lighter. Mommy's going to be a whole lot happier. And mommy's going to be incredibly confident. And now mommy's going to say, listen, kids, I want to feed you a little bit of juice. Now, you don't want a carrot juice or apple juice in there, but guess what? I'm going to tell you to put carrot and apple juice in. You've been feeding your kids hot dogs and hamburgers. I'm not going to tell you to give them sprout salads. I'm going to tell you to get soy hot dogs and soy hamburgers. Do you follow what I mean? So now, slowly but surely, it may take a year. Who cares? But you get them off the nitrates, and you get them on soy burgers, or whatever it may be. And that's how you slowly but surely do it. You don't come on with Till of the Hun. I mean, so many guests come to us, and they become so enthusiastic, and they, I'm going to go home and f change my children's diet. And I say, please don't. <laughs> you know, remember, you've just spent 10, 15, 25 years contaminating these kids to think that what you've done is love them through food. Now you're going to come home and give them wheatgrass implants? Come on. <laughs> you know, let's do, go slow on this. How do you feed them sprouts? And the kids, how old are your kids? My son's four. Oh, yeah, he's going to love sprouting. My best students aren't you. You're, you're contaminated. I go into a four- or five-year-old group of kids, and I show them seeds, and I show them a jar, and I show them a screen. They flip. Wow. When you say responsibility, you say, oh, another thing, I've got to be responsible. They say, responsibility. And then you say, watch these things grow. One of the greatest things you can do. So your kids are going to love sprouting. And when you start to eat it, you're going to have to, there's some books out on raw food, like children's books for four-year-olds that are wonderful. They show muscles growing and wheatgrass speaking and all of this stuff. They're really fun books. And I think we still have one, a child's book left at the Institute, but there's other ones too. 
Um, get online and look it up Google. But these are the kind of things you do. And then find other families. You know, if you have the average American family, everyone's pork, you know, hitting pork chops and drinking wine, you've got to hang out with other vegan families. Now, the problem is, let's be candid, a lot of these vegans are little nuts. They really are. I mean, they're not people I would hang out with, to be honest with you. You know, <laughs> they're sort of, you know, omers and all this. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> Some of you may be that, but I don't give a shit. You know, the, the fact of the matter is you're going to find normal people. What I was really uh, surprised to find out, the fastest growing group politically in the United States that are becoming vegan are conservatives. Now, that was the opposite of my generation. A conservative wouldn't even consider <laughs> what I was doing. You know, that we were all completely open liberal at that point. And the fact is, you see that trend. And I see who comes to lectures. It used to be like, you know, everyone dying and some hippies, period. <laughs> <laughs> you either had to be a hippie or dying, and that was it. You go. Now it's everyone that comes to these lectures all over the world. It's just amazing. So hang out with some people who resonate with you and show your child that you're not the weirdo mother, that there's a lot of other weirdo mothers that do this, and as they get older, you're going to love you. The other answer for you that have older children, if you start them when they're young enough, and I don't mean teenager, you try to change them a teenager, you're going to have hell in your family. Because they need to reject you. If they don't, something's wrong with them. You need to get them to a psychologist. Okay, now, what you have to do is you start them at 8, 9, 10 years old, and they learn this. They're going to fall off this program. My children didn't because they saw people coming back from the dead. So they all remain vegan. I wouldn't say they're all on 100% raw food. They're not. But a good part of their diet's raw. They're, two of my daughters are completely, my son, my, three of my children that are out, all are organic. If they can't afford it, organic, they don't eat it at this point. So they got it. But most children are going to fall. They're going to fall off, and you're going to have to shut your mouth. My father kept saying, quit telling them what to do. They're not going to listen to you. The more you tell them, the more they're going to go against it. Let them make mistakes, and because you gave them a good core, they're going to come back. And we see this. Overwhelmingly, unless they're very weak personalities and marry somebody who won't do this because they're so frightened, they may fall off. They may start to age prematurely, feel get a little chubby, whatever. I'd say 80% of them come back to the flock. And it may be 25, 30 years old when they do, but what you're doing now is so incredibly critical for a child's life. Not only their life, but the life of their children and the future children. And we see this now. So excellent question. And also with overly prescribed antibiotics for children, what do you think about MMS or Agricept as an option? What about enemas, you said? MMS. Um, oh, MSM. <laughs> or, no, not MMS. MMS. Mer okay. uh, mineral. Be very cautious. Be very cautious. MMS is one of the most dangerous hypes I've ever seen at all because it's chlorine. This is chlorine. Don't let anyone tell you it's not chlorine. Can chlorine kill microbes? Yes. Can chlorine kill you? Yes. <laughs> so be very cautious. I mean, there's many ways to get oxygen into your body that is not going to kill you. Stabilize oxygen like cell food. I'd much rather see you use that if you're going to use it. But I'd much rather see you take green drinks that have oxygen in it and wheatgrass that have oxygen in it. Much, much better than that. I mean, you've and got to remember that we are so trained as consumers in our world that the way we relate to things, even myself, it sparks interest sometimes, is when they sell you something. You know, you have guys that say, this cures disease. Well, that's the first sign it's bullshit right there. Because one thing never cures disease. Nothing cures disease. You're never cured, by the way. You put things into remission because your immune system got strong. And it's in remission. Now you're a good girl, guess what? It stays in remission. You get goofy, guess what? Like this poor woman. Gets up, battles a, a potential lymphoma, God knows what she has. Once they say she's well, she takes the foot off the gas, and within a matter of how many months? You know what that story is? That's four out of ten people that heal disease. So they come to us, here we have the paperwork, stage three this, stage four that, gone, boom. I get a call back. Usually three years. Three years later, I've been on the diet. I don't know what's wrong. My disease came back. I've had this conversation a thousand times. I say, okay, so tell me what you're eating. What they say is, I'm taking carrots for breakfast, I'm taking celery for lunch, and I'm drinking a decaffeinated organic coffee, okay, at night. Do you follow? I said, now tell me where the program is in this. How about the sprouts? How about the green juice? Well, you know, because Dr. Schmuckie from the University of Schmuckdom told me that, 
You get what I'm saying? Be cautious with this stuff. Don't let your foot off the gas. One last question, and then we're going to dance for a while and say goodbye. This has been a loving event. Hi, Brian. Um, can you discuss um, skincare products and makeup? Oh, my. My God. My God. Let me just put it in perspective. The three sickest professions that come to us, pilots one, flight attendants two, hairdressers three, who has the highest amount of significant disorders, I've just told you that. Pilots and, and flight attendants, cosmic radiation. That's not a new age. When you get above, it's cosmic radiation. And look at these poor flight attendants. They all look like they're 20 years older if they've done enough of it. Okay. Number two, uh, my research assistant is called Randall Fitzgerald. He wrote the most brilliant book on this subject. He used to be the editor of Reader's Digest. That's why I like him. You know, I come up with these convoluted concepts, and he says, look, it, nobody knows, knows what the hell you're talking about. So give me a paragraph. I'll make it into two sentences that people understand. So he's great for me because he's not afraid of me, and he comes back, and he does whatever I'm saying. He makes it better. Okay? He wrote a book called The Hundred-Year Lie. This is a prerequisite reading. It's a shame it never popularized, The Hundred-Year Lie. He also helped to co-author a book for the top toxic doctor in the United States. I think he's at either Northwestern or University of Chicago, Dr. Epstein. And that's called Toxic Beauty. When you read this book, if you wear cosmetics that are normal, use hair dyes that are normal, I promise you, you're suicidal. As much as I thought I knew about it, when I read this book, several times I shook and thinking how the masses, millions and millions of women and some men, are wearing things. I pointed out you know, 23 hours ago, as an example, that top perfumes have formaldehyde in it, most of it. Yeah. On and on, this, it's like, it's, you almost think there's a conspiracy. It's not, it's just greed. Where people sit in a room and say, how are we going to kill these people? You know, how are we going to kill these? That's how crazy the whole thing is. But it's just haphazard, and nobody's watching, and that's the concern. So as important as everything else we've talked about during this time we've had together is what you've just said, the last question, is just as important, just as poignant, and as significant. You could do everything I'm telling you to do. Put hair dye on your head, that's the not, not the good hair dye, and end up with disease. You could be putting on your face cosmetics with lead and mercury in it. Do you know how many have lead and mercury in it? The majority. Almost all of them. And even the natural ones, in great part, in, is mostly a lie. When you go to the natural health store and look at what really is in the ingredients of it, the, there are some good ones, Dr. Helschka, Jalik, some other more unique ones. You know, we have now been working, as an example, we're creating a Hippocrates shampoo and conditioner. For one and a half years, I've been working with this incredibly nice man who wants to do the best, and we haven't accepted it yet. Every time I look at it, I say, well, that's good, and then it comes back, and he's pissed at me because I look at it one step further, and I say, wait a minute. Here is a Dr. Smith 20 years ago that said that was bad, so we've got to get that out of it. So this is how you have to do it. There's another couple I met, two doctors, researchers, out in California. They're going to write an article. All of you have your name on the list now for Hippocrates Magazine. Okay. You're going to be getting it in either the spring or the summer, or end of the summer, you're going to be getting one. They have written the most definitive book on, on uh, sunscreens. I knew sunscreens were bad, unless they're, what? What do, what do the uh, lifeguards wear? Zinc oxide. That's it. The best of all. And the best sunscreens that aren't polluting are zinc oxide. So why not buy a $2 tube, stick it on your face, and do Al Jolson interpretations? <laughs> But the reality, who cares? Go to a neighborhood nobody knows you. What you're worrying about? <laughs> you know, that's what you should be wearing, not all of this pollution. But they're going to be writing an article. They stunned me. I said, okay, I'll, as a token gesture, I'll read their book on the plane coming. I didn't want to get off the plane so I could finish the last 30 pages. I was stunned at that. So on and on this goes. So I want you all to stand up. We're going to dance a little bit together. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you so much for spending this precious time together. I hope you learned a lot, your life was enriched. We're here for you. Just contact us at The Real Truth About Health or at the Hippocrates Health Institute, and we're here to make sure that you take the next step with support and love.